Paizo Pathfinder Power Hour. Tonight we're going to talk about incorporeal creatures. You can't touch them, and they can go through walls. Our first caller tonight. Uh, we're done with that. It's what? <laughs> <laughs> it's actually Troubles and Atari Psych. I got y'all. We're back. Did this you? Week. We took a week <laughs> off. Now we're back. Troubles and Atari. Uh, rather than callers, we are going to have our players here. We've got Gabe, Michelle, Xander, and Katie ready to play another exciting session of our Troubles in Otari follow-up to the Pathfinder Beginner Box. I'm super excited. I'm really eager to get back into it. What are your guys' thoughts on incorporeal creatures? Well, the cool cats know we are a little bit iffy on g g ghosts, but we did make a friend <laughs> last time. <laughs> That's true. What's his That's name? That's true. Finley, right? Name Blue was Finley? something yeah. blue. Ooh. Blue? I didn't remember. Blue Finley. Well, he was called Blue Finley because he was I blue. I think that was, was something blue. that they just, like, his name was Finley. Hmm. They called him Blue Finley because he was a blue ghost. Wait, are there ghosts of other colors? You may find out. Who I knows? That. That's what Pathfinder is all about. <laughs> is that what it's all about? It's all about. Can Paizo out what the chime the in on the channel and let us know? In the book somewhere. <laughs> oh goodness uh you know what i think uh i could use some 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 fantasy land time it's time mm. to play some pathfinder i just want to dive right into it we missed last week i'm really eager to get into it this week so i say we hit the ground running so here we go outside the town of otari a lone figure slinks through the brush, observing a small camp of reptilians arguing over a small, dirty bag of odds and ends. One picks up a rusty iron fork and tosses it into the woods. No! This is bad treasure! Dragon baby, eat us like a bug! Must get better, must have gold, gem, silver! Thief, you see three kobolds getting increasingly agitated with one another as they continue to argue about whose fault it is that their recent attempt to collect treasure for a baby dragon that doesn't even exist went so poorly. Mm -hmm. As they dig through their bag, you see that they have come across some mostly worthless junk, and you know that they bear some fresh surface wounds. Nothing mortal, but it's very clear that they've suffered a recent thrashing. Now you came all this way, risking your life alone. Mm -hmm. to travel so far from civilized lands to find them. So I do have a question, and that is, what are you doing here? Uh, Thee actually takes the spark blade and gives himself a couple not deep but fresh wounds across himself, Ooh. cut okay. across the cheek, a couple, like, stabs in the arm, uh, puts it away, and then he's going to limp out. There's a trouble. There's a problem. All three of the kobolds turn and they're like, ah, 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 and then they see it's you and they can see that you're wounded. And there's this moment of confusion. Like they don't quite seem to know what to make of this. But I would love to see what a deception check from you looks like. Gladly. Okay. I'm really good at this. So I don't think that one. <laughs> That's a 27. <laughs> Oh, yeah, they are, like, you actually see one of them, like, steps forward. He looks genuinely concerned for your well-being. He's like, oh, no, what happened? What happened to Baby Dragon, okay? Are you okay? Oh, no, are they coming? Oh, what's happening? They seem to be panicked by your desperate appearance. A horde of adventurers killed our Baby Dragon. <laughs> now, we didn't get rid of the corpse, did we? We just left it down there. 
I do believe that it would theoretically still be down there. Tell them where it is. <laughs> <laughs> but I tell them the entrance that doesn't go through the lady's house. Uh, right, right. There was a there was yes. another entrance that you guys found. Yeah. Oh no. How could be? No, no. Adventures. We hate adventures. Oh, they're coming. Oh, this is bad. We. I think they're looking doing? for you. Oh no. Find somewhere okay. safe. There you go. You, you come. You come, we go, we go, run. Yes. Cobalt's going to run. Run, run, run. I'm going to distract them. But no, if you need a friend in Otari, you have a friend in Thievery. Cobalt's one of them. Um, steps up and uh, like holds out his one of his curled talons to you. And it yeah. kind of gives you this like handshake feel to it yep um i link the talon with a with a finger to kind of mimic yes we will we will go and run we get strong we kill all humans later yes and we find you and you help and run and we get a new dragon yes yes but now is run now is run 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 and indeed all three of the kobolds gather up hastily everything that they've been tossing about uh, as quickly as they can and rush through the brush, disappearing. When they're gone far away, he kind of just, "Ah, I love this place (laughs) so much. (laughs) And then just starts walking back, whistling to himself, heading back to the (laughs) home. You make it back to the outskirts of Otari without too much trouble. after a few hours, you all find yourselves back at, uh, I don't even know what we're calling it, home base, I guess, <laughs> yeah. where you guys have all uh, recently cleared. You know that um, obviously you, you, you had a, a frightening encounter with the Basilisk not too long ago, where two of you were actually turned to stone, and it was lucky. That's right. We really knew exactly what to do. (laughs) Because after slaying the basilisk, you were able to coat the two stone statues of your friends with its blood, turning them back. Yes. You had found the very kobolds that Fee was just now talking to. Uh, Recovered a bundle of parcels, which now you have in your possession, which leads you to your next job, which is to deliver this bundle of parcels. However, it is getting pretty late in the day. The rigors of the day have all left you quite, quite exhausted. He rolls back up home, probably pretending like nothing happened, like nothing's out of the ordinary whatsoever. I tell them I met a lover. (laughs) Ingot was worried about Thee. Did everything go according to plan with the lover? It did. They're very strong. They picked me up, carried me like like the, like in their arms. Sounds like a good time. I enjoy being Little Spoon. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> it's just it's becoming a very different game. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's a comic relief before we almost die again. <laughs> yeah. What <laughs> do you, as I mentioned, it's late in the day. Um, uh, I don't know where you guys were on spells and abilities and hit points in the, at the beginning of your, <laughs> of your adventures, though I imagine that a night's rest isn't too out of the ordinary. Uh, but again, you do have these these parcels to deliver. You know that um, uh, you guys basically are, as we had discussed in a previous episode, you are now the Otari mail service. <laughs> I know Waverly was, was frantically trying to find the post office, and it's you. <laughs> yeah. You are the post office now. So these people count on you. You've become sort of an integral part of the Otari economic future <laughs> so good job on integrating yourselves into that before you even had a name for your outfit you <laughs> became an integral part of the civilized world around you so congratulations mm. but is there anything you guys wanted to do sort of uh while you were hanging out in the home um you just head to bed do you i don't know you guys tell me it's your game now i feel like before bed every night i uh 
I kind of refreshed the uh, box of promo packages for uh, the pickle, my uh, my parents' pickle uh, store, so that I have, you know, fresh pack to give out in case someone comes by. And then I go and uh, wash off all the basculus blood, because we are all covered in it, I believe, oh, from, yeah. like, no, heads sure to toesies. <laughs> no way, it's not everywhere. <laughs> There's just, like, a hose in the front yard, and we're just hosing yeah. each other. <laughs> <laughs> Taking turns. Yeah. Well, luckily, you have uh, some oceanfront property, mm -hmm. so getting access to water is not a problem <laughs> at all. Um, uh, is anybody else doing anything? Is there anything else anybody wants to do? Just so you guys know, go to bed is a perfectly acceptable answer. I just don't want to cut off anything if you do have things that you want to do. That's why I'm stalling. There's no specific yeah. reason, but I'm giving you the opportunity. So you guys tell me how you want it to run. Uh, yeah, well, just as we established before, Ingot is going to consult his crystals and rocks that he has on his shelves and uh, use that to meditate and refuel his magics uh, before a sound slumber. And he, Ingot definitely snores, like mm -hmm. hardcore. For sure. I could have told you that without even, without even hearing it. I just, I just imagined it. <laughs> uh, Waverly would like to, before going to bed, go through the satchel of all the mail and basically sure. organize it uh, alphabetically. <laughs> And nice. uh, in in the, uh, I guess, closest to us, to furthest to us, mm -hmm. um, and kind of plan our route for the morrow. Um, sure. Like a, yeah, so. Yeah. And then uh, well, I can tell you a couple of things about that then. Mm -hmm. um, okay. You note as you're going through it, uh, there are a couple of items that are actually a little bit perishable and they might actually be good to deliver first. There is a bundle of imported spicy peppers from Absalom. Uh, and there's also a wrapped bundle of herbs. Those look like uh, they would be probably a good idea to get rid of sooner. Um, there are a couple of other like letters that you guys could drop off fairly easily in between doing anything. And the only other bigger package that you see uh, is uh, you're not sure what's in it, but it, it rattles like, like, like there's definitely metal inside it, several pieces of heavy metal inside. Uh, the peppers are slated to go to a local alchemist and brewer named Magaloy. Uh, make a society check for me. Mm -hmm. Seven. Seven. <laughs> you, don't know who, you don't know who Magaloy is, but you have an address, so that's good enough. Um, then there, there is a bundle of herbs for someone named Abanye, which you can make another society check for if you'd like to know anything about Al Banye? that. Abanye? Abanye. Um, no L. Uh, A-B-A-N. Cool. All right. Uh, here we go. Better. Uh, fifteen. Ooh, fifteen. Uh, yeah, he is a druid who lives on the outskirts of Otari, um, and he uh, he's known for making like balms and salves and herbal teas and he sell he has he, he basically his trade is um you know you know the rose apothecary from schitt's creek yeah that's yeah. basically what that's basically what he does he sells <laughs> those kinds of things to all the people of otari yes. <laughs> that's amazing um okay uh and then i would go oh actually where does the uh, rattling metal package that all is slated for delivery to the Giant's Wheel. And that I won't even make you roll for. Everybody knows that the Giant's Wheel is one of the... Uh, uh, lumber is a huge business in Otari. And the Giant's Wheel is like... Uh, that's where all the lumber goes to be processed. It's, uh, it's one of the biggest uh, sort of industrial sites in o around Otari. So that you are just well-versed in. It's one of those things where, like, as you're approaching Otari, you can see the giant's wheel. Okay. I go to bed. <laughs> right. <laughs> Sounds good to me. So you all wake up refreshed the next morning. You're feeling good. Uh, Waverly seems to have all of these parcels, like, laid out in, in like, 
alphabetical order and some of them are marked as priority and other ones are like you know uh, are sort of marked out by like you can see like this little map of the town like okay we go here here first do this and this and this so she seems to have it all under control um but what are the rest of you what are the rest of you doing get up ready to go what is that <laughs> i'm just pointing at the pile of mail what is, oh. what is, what is oh, that? Oh, me. Oh, yes. Um, well, so I did stay up just a little bit later than you, and I decided to organize all of this mail by priority and alphabetically to make our deliveries much easier. Wait, why are we delivering mail? Because the left before you all oh, right. <laughs> agreed to this. Oh, <laughs> well, um, Aloria? needed the mail delivered because the post office um, didn't have enough workers for them to continue. So she's asked us to deliver the mail. Did she offer to pay us? Uh, I don't quite remember. Um, hmm. Is she? Perhaps <laughs> yes, perhaps you are, you are. So just because, it, because it has been two weeks, uh, <laughs> you are, you have been offered payment for this. And okay. it's with the understanding that this won't be your like permanent job. You're just doing this because you have these parcels and these are priority because they're here. She will find other couriers to, to take up the job. You guys are not actually going to become a delivery service permanently. <laughs> <laughs> but Fee, it is not about the coin that she'll be giving us. It is about reuniting the male with their proper owners. And we're doing also- this to be, oh, good. Uh, and also, uh, this was Norella's last task, so as honorable adventurers, I think it is, since we were not able to save her, I think it is fitting that we finished the last thing that she wanted to do, which was deliver this mail to some people in this town. But, you know, not all adventures are going to be great and amazing. Yeah, oh, I no, mean- this, this could very well be great and amazing. So I do think that there are two packages that we need to deliver first for they carry um, perishables. So I do think that we need to um, take this first one and she'll hold it up. Um, this is going to Magaloy. Do you know him? Ingot would like to make a society check because Ingot is pretty good at society. Yeah. I would love for that to happen. <laughs> Oh, uh, well, 18? Okay. 18. Yeah, uh, Magaloy runs a brewery. Uh, they are a um, an alchemist. Um, it is alchemist. actually one of Otari's only Tengu residents. Ooh! Uh, oh. are, are basically large uh, humanoid corvids. Um, this is basically a, a raven person. And uh, very pleasant. Uh, regularly gets a lot of shipments of strange, esoteric herbs and ingredients from places like Absalom. Um, well-known and well-liked character in the in, in Otari. Runs a very successful business. Yes, Ingot is familiar with Magloy. Very successful alchemist. Very friendly. Mm. That is wonderful. And if we need anything while we're there, well, you can stock up. Mm. Ingot would appreciate this opportunity. And also, this package is starting to smell. Oh, then we must hurry. Um, and additionally, there are some spices and herbs that we do need to take. Um, have you heard of Albania? The druid um, makes bombs and oils and, and no? I can check. Yeah. Sure. That's only a tad. I want to see if I know, since I'm from here. I'm gonna. Yes. <laughs> the answer is yes. <laughs> the... Beep, boop, beep, boop society, whatever. Okay. Anything in that? Uh, four to four. So, four. Oh my gosh. I don't know that Crystal that I has in. a very uh, uh, a good skincare regimen, probably. So, oh, right. so I'm just not familiar with a Banya shop. Um, maybe it's somewhere to check out. You know, I mean, maybe if you're gonna be if you're gonna be a famous adventurer, you gotta have your hair and your skin on point, and a Banya can help. Mm. Um, I like this. That's pitch. what they say. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, let's figure out wh- which package seems the most stinky, and we'll do that one first. Um, can I do a smell check, Jim? Uh-huh. <laughs> I mean, at this point, you would guess that it, it's probably easier to get to um, Magaloy's first because okay. that is in Otari proper, whereas Abanye lives a little bit outside, so it would just, a uh, natural route would be to go there, but you're mm-hmm. more than welcome to... Oh, 
Gristle, I've already it. marked it on the map since oh. Magaloy's shop is actually closer to where we are currently. Okay, well, um, thank you for organizing all the boring stuff. Let's go and load up the horse and get going. Horse? We have, I have a horse. It's been two weeks. Uh, this name is... Oh, right. Pork chop. Pork chop. Pork chop, <laughs> pork chop the horse. Uh, yeah, pork chop's doing great. Thank you for asking. Uh, yes, and Ingot will show you the way. All right. We load so up, up the horse. All the you time. load up the horse. And you head out. Um, again, you're the, the first part of your day actually takes you back into Otari proper. Um, and it is not hard at all, especially because uh, Ingot already knows right where it is to find McAvoy's shop. Um, you can see uh, it is, um, you. as soon as you arrive, um, you are greeted by a black feathered Tengu with a beak studded, and she's got all these little tiny gemstones uh, arranged in floral patterns uh, across her beak. And she looks and she doesn't seem to to know your purpose at first, so she approaches, oh, uh, uh, hello, hello. Um, I, I, I uh, uh, tonics and um, uh, elixirs and um, a good a good ale, uh, if that's what you're looking for. I'm, not sure mm. I... Oh, wait, wait, no, wait, hold on. What am I talking about? I know exactly who you are. You're those, you're those, uh, the, the three of you, at least, are, are the ones who, the, oh my gosh, the mm. heroes, of course, you're probably here for, for uh, all kinds of things. Yes, I, forget the ale. Uh, well, you need, well, you need uh, the of light and forget the, the, and... <laughs> Well, let's yeah. not forget the ale, but you're right. We are the heroes of Otari. The four, three, four... Look, look at these four great... Of us. I'm Wait. I'm just their uh, their scryer, the uh. heroes of Otari. So great, so grand. Only three of them. Only three. Ooh, <laughs> they are wonderful adventurers and heroes, but that is not our purpose here today. Um, but we do have your spicy peppers. Uh, we do oh. apologize for the delay. Well, not at all. Well, well, that's wonderful. I was waiting on these. These are fantastic. I can't wait to get these into my new is anti-venom. It is going to give it that pop that has always been lacking. Um, oh, uh, this, is, this is fantastic. You know, though, are you making other deliveries today? Oh, mm. yes, we have quite a few. Oh, oh, that's wonderful. Um, um, if you're out by Slab Hill, would you consider, because adventurers, yes, would you consider perhaps... Um, uh, it's, uh, I'm afraid it's, it's, it's a bit common for dragon slayers, but, uh, there are, there's uh, something you could get me, um, uh, the next ingredient in my anti-venom, um, you say I need these spicy peppers, and I also need some copper cap mushrooms, um, unfortunately, they're in Slab Hill, I can't get to Slab Hill, and if you happen to just be out and about, you know, uh, I would actually give you, I'll give you uh, some of my batch from the, the anti-venom. What do you oh, say? Does that it sound like wonderful. a good deal? Mm -hmm. uh, might I ask, um, what is the anti-venom for? Uh, it's for venoms. If you get stung or bitten or you ingest something that you shouldn't be ingesting, oh. uh, you take a little bit of this and again, it'll have that nice little spicy pop that most other brands don't don't have. You see, everybody focuses on the effects of the anti-venoms or their elixirs of life. Nobody ever focuses on the uh, the process of imbibing, you know? What's the point of uh, curing what ails you if it doesn't also taste good? Well spoken. Well, yes, of course, we'll do that. Hmm. It seems as though there is hesitation to uh, uh, visit Slab Hill. Ingid is not familiar with this area. Is there something dangerous? Did someone say no danger? <laughs> what is this? Tell me about this hill. <laughs> it, well, I mean, it, it, it's no more dangerous than anywhere else. I mean, people go to Slab Hill. I could go to Slab Hill, but I'm very busy today and I don't have time. And I figured if you're out and about making deliveries and you're adventurers, perhaps you would be interested in, you know, a little bit of a, uh, what do they call it, a side quest? Ah, uh, the dangers of time management, Ingid understands. Yes, time, the most dangerous thing of all. 
and it shouldn't be an inconvenience nor a problem at all for a great adventurer that is Gristle to stop along the journey and pick up some of these copper cap mushrooms. Uh, go oh. ahead, and anybody who wants to could make. Uh, I'll accept society, nature, or if you have anything uh, like a lore pertaining to geography in any way, that all works. So that feels a fairly. I just rolled a one. All right, so uh, sure. no. uh, Fifteen. Um, eight. Sure. I'm gonna abstain because uh, Ingot doesn't know. Being from here, Gristle, you're well aware that Slab Hill is a pretty popular site uh, near to town. Um, uh, it is actually a barrow. Uh, it's a well-known spot for sightseers, picnickers, and young people looking for a spot to get away from themselves for a few hours. Like, what it's is not, a barrow? It's not a no. barrow. Is basically <laughs> a uh, a, 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 a man-made hill that is used as like a burial site. Mm. Mm. Uh, it is um, not known to be any more dangerous than any of the other uh, areas around Otari. So there's always there, there's danger everywhere, but this is not like a oh there's there's ghosts at, at Slab Hill that will kill you if you <laughs> go near them. Like, there's no, you know. And is it on the way to these other places? Is it nearby? <coughs> looking it's at the map, <laughs> sorry. Um, looking at the map that Waverly has provided of your delivery routes, it does look like it's really not that much farther out of the way. You could stop at a Bonnier's and then have it over to Slab Hill and uh, have this woman her copper cat mushrooms by lunchtime if you're quick. Hey, I think we should do this quest because it, it is simple. And uh, honestly, from our last adventure, <laughs> we uh, could have used some potions of healing back then for various critters. So I, it wouldn't hurt to help it. it. Wouldn't hurt to, it wouldn't, what's the phrase? Let's mm -hmm. do it. Cause it wouldn't hurt us <laughs> to do it. Mm -hmm. That one. It really like looks through her bag at all her healing potions and is really confused. <laughs> a antidote and antivenom, very useful. Can you make poison tastier? Well, I mean, I wouldn't do that because that sounds very dangerous. But I could do that if it mm. were, you know, something that I needed to do for any particular reason. You're one of my new favorite people. <laughs> I think I like you too, but I'm not sure yet. That's a weird, I get that a weird a lot. answer. <laughs> that's all so I got. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, she seems happy with, with the delivery for one down, uh, two to go, and you've gotten yourself a little side job on top of it. It does seem, it now occurs to you that making these deliveries gives you a really good opportunity to sort of meet and greet others in Otari who might provide mm. further employment opportunities. This is like a this is like a networking gig <laughs> that you've got. Mm. Oh, we should have made business cards, but we don't have a name yet. Damn. <sighs> Everyone knows that the best way to advertise is to make, you know, cards and like have your information on it, like a little map of where you are so people can find you later. But oh. we didn't really have enough foresight for that this time. Hmm. Gristle, don't forget to give, um, um, Ms. Magaloy, a, a copy of your sample. Oh, yes. Okay. <clears throat> I, I grind the horse. I grab a pickle jar, the pickle sample kit. I run back <laughs> over. And this is for you. Uh, don't forget the Van der Ript's uh, pickle uh, factory. It's uh, the best pickles in the land. And I go back to the I leave <laughs> you for, she's got now this like gift, gift parcel. It's like, oh, thank, thank you. <laughs> Wonderful. I'll be sure to eat the pickled fish. We'll be back with your mushrooms later. Hooray. As we're it's walking, uh, Ingot will pull Gristle aside and be like, maybe pickled fish flavored anti-venom. That sounds amazing. Mm -hmm. I think that would add a add a pop to her. Maybe uh maybe giving her those pickles will give her give give them the idea that uh that extra pop they need is actually pickle power, not what do you give her? Pickle Him power. Pick pickle power, yeah. Mm. Pickle power. Mm. <laughs> Pickle power. <laughs> oh, haunt me. <laughs> oh no. So where to next? Um, there are a couple of other deliveries, like you hand off some letters as you're moving through uh, Otari, and then uh, I imagine if you're if you're following Waverly's map, that would take you uh, 
through the town proper. You drop off a couple of unremarkable deliveries. Some people aren't even home. Um, you just, you know, drop it in the mail slot and move on. Um, before the next stop on your list would be a Banier's hut. Or you could go to uh, Slab Hill first. It's kind of up to you which which way you wanted to do that. Um, a Banier's is closer, but if you wanted to circle back, I don't know how you feel about that. Eh. Let's visit see. a Banier. A ban- yeah. Banier's first. All righty. So you begin making your way. Uh, again, he lives uh, in, a, in a rather secluded little spot. It's just outside of Otari. Whereas you guys, I believe, are southwest from Otari. He's sort of northwest. So um, he's, he's, he's about the same distance outside of Otari that you guys are, but in a different direction. Um, and it takes you about an hour to get there. Uh, which you find yourselves walking down this forested path that is both well-maintained and clearly designed to have minimal ma- minimal impact on the natural environment as it meanders around root structures and mossy rocks where others may have simply removed such obstructions to make a straighter path. Uh, but before too long, you come within sight of a small cottage that is surrounded by a beautiful blooming garden. Hmm. You do. I think Ingit is entranced by this whole image and just starts to, like, love all of this. <laughs> He'll start to smell the flowers as we get closer. And you can. I mean, even even just as you're walking up, I mean, you, like the, the the breeze seems to be perfectly situated to like waft this pleasant bouquet of blooming flowers. Um, mm. It's it's literally it's it's like walking through this like idyllic little garden grove. As you guys are moving forward, why don't Thee and Gristle and Waverly then uh, mm-hmm. let me know what your perception bonuses are? Oh, distracted by flowers. He Nothing gets a little goes, distracted. <laughs> Nothing goes right. This seems wrong. <laughs> uh, six for me. Yeah, same for six. Uh, Waverly, Eight. what did you say? Eight. Waverly. Um, you know, Ingot's just kind of like just uh, he looks like he's about ready to frolic through this <laughs> garden. Um, even. <laughs> and Thee and Gristle, of course, have their eye out because they're always, you know, they're professionals. They've always, you know, they've got their head in the game, but they don't notice what you notice as you're walking up to the door, uh, which is that it's slightly, it's hanging slightly ajar. Um, and you also notice that one of the curtains in a nearby window hangs askew as if the rod had been like broken and you're like reaching out for the door and you just stop because it, it just gives you this bad vibe when you see this. Uh, Waverly will then not touch the door but kind of try to peek through the crack and and say, mm-hmm. uh, excuse me, hello? Uh, you, at the sound of your voice, like through the crack, you see these shifting shadows move very suddenly, and then you hear this like crash of of furniture from inside. Um, I grab the door silence. and shut it. Oh, you shut the door. Okay, great. <laughs> shut the door. The door shut. And I back up. <laughs> and back away. Okay. Um, you guys. Uh, I I think that there's there's something wrong inside of Abanya's house. I I don't think they're in there. Um, but I saw some shadows. Maybe we should as leave the package at the door then. A- as you're talking, almost interrupting you, um, when you slam the door shut, you pull it closed, almost a split second later, you hear just on the other side of this door, the sound of like shattering like glass or maybe like a vase or something. There is this very loud, sudden crash just on the other side of the door. <laughs> Would would I know anything about the like what I saw? Would I be able to? Determine? You didn't get a clear enough look. I mean, like the door wasn't open very much, and you shut it pretty quick. Uh, you know that there's some movement in there, and like, and it was like there was some heavy. Like you all have heard these sounds at this point. Like like there was a crash, not just when she closed the door, but before that, like a clad, like like maybe overturned furniture or something like. There was some sudden violent motion in there. Uh, I want to walk up to the front door and I just yell, uh, are you okay in there? Yell once for you're fine and we should leave our package at the door. Maybe yell twice if we should come in there and help you. 
make a perception check for me. <laughs> Damn it. Um, ooh, that is, uh, that is, uh, 14. 14. Um, you hear some heavy sounds of movement from beyond. Scraping, crashing, clattering, um, but you don't hear, like, it, it like, that sounds sort of, like, drowns out anything else that might be happening in there. Hmm. Zero yelling, which wasn't on the list. So I kick the door open. <laughs> All right, you kick open the door. As you do, uh, light spills into the room, and the, what comes out is this uh, horrific smell, this, this thick, musty odor that sort of drowns out the pleasant sound from the garden behind you. Uh, and there are these two human-sized, viney, leafy creatures that look like they're in the middle of, like, ripping furniture and throwing it around the room. And they stop what they're doing, turn towards the lot of you, and begin shambling forward. A banye or a banye's kids? No. <laughs> if this is a banye, man, he has gone. He, he, he whatever he was using, uh, you don't want any part of. Uh, no de esta a banye. <laughs> They're no good. Uh, we will need to roll initiative. Uh, <laughs> the eyes make it so much worse. They're yeah, like skull like space. Yeah, in the <laughs> eyes. Oops. Aw, I don't want this. <laughs> 19. 19 for Waverly. Ingot got a 10. Oh, Ingot. <laughs> 23. Oh, okay. There we go. Gristle so, was ready for danger. So I wasn't already stealthing, so this is just perception, right? Uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, so then nat 20 for a 26. Ooh. 26 still on top of the game. Even. <laughs> is not stealthing. Uh, that is going to me here. And Thee, you are the first to react. Gristle is standing there in the doorway. You see these two shambling plant creatures behind her, uh, still in the in the shadowy interior of Abanye's cottage. And you realize that uh, this is not this is not what you what you came here to do. There's some problems here that need to be taken care of. Uh, yeah, what do you do? hate that. Um... I'm gonna pull out my short bow and uh, with quick draw, so I can pull that as part of my attack. I'm gonna take a shot first. Sounds good to me. Quick draw the bow. Fire a, at one. That's a. That's a I will say, one. Oh no! Oh, no. <laughs> a natural one. Yeah, that's, that's a critical bad. failure. That's a critical failure, and Gristle's standing right there in the doorway. <laughs> Why does this keep happening? Gristle, you. You look over and suddenly, like, you know, you're about to go and, and reach for your sword, maybe, and almost like through the crook of your elbow, this arrow just comes in, almost like spearing your own arm and thunks <laughs> quivering right into the door frame. Uh, Thee barely manages not to shoot you, uh, but he definitely doesn't hit these creatures. <laughs> but luckily, he only used one action and he's got two more. Let's see what happens next. I, I yell back. Oh, was that like a warning shot? Good idea, Fee. Excellent. Thank, thank, thank you, Grizzle. You're so, you're, you're so brave. You're, you know what? I'm got. <laughs> I just dropped the bow. <laughs> um, am I able to move past Gristle up to one of the creatures? Yeah. Okay, you can so gonna, move through an ally square without any problem. Gonna drop the bow. Uh, mm -hmm. then my second action to move through Gristle to the ally, and then quick draw my short sword, and attack. Okay. Okay. Uh, it doesn't affect you immediately. But as you get up to these creatures, that musty odor becomes oh. almost overwhelming. What the hell is uh, that? But you can make your attack. <laughs> I was looking down at my sheet. What the hell is that? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Is this a different one? I think this is what we were. This is the same one. This is it was the, it was a I think it was a misfire on the first one. It's okay. I, I want the other ones. <laughs> <laughs> That's oh, big. I like them. It's a twenty-four. Uh, oh yeah, twenty-four hits. Yeah, yeah right in there. really well with my minus five. This is fine. Uh, for six damage. 
six points of damage. So you just start hacking away, and bits of vine and leaf go flying off into the into the corners of the cottage. But this thing, it's tough. It's a tough old bird. And as you're hacking it away, you realize you're going to have to do a lot more hacking to get rid of this thing. I hate uh, this. But unfortunately, you're out of actions. Which will take us to the next in our initiative order, which is Gristle. Really? Gristle, your, Gristle herself. Yo, um, I'm looking up all the random items I have myself right now. Uh, <laughs> Alan. I have because I have a I have a I have a spark. No, you have spark blade. I don't have that. Okay. All right. This makes sense. You have the flame one. Yeah. The, the flame, which I know how to use now. Maybe mm-hmm. I, yeah. might, I might have forgot. I'm looking for the page and I can't find it. <laughs> um, it's fine. I'll figure it out. <clears throat> Oh, excellent, Thee. That's the, that's one of the first times I've ever seen you just jump right into melee battle. I'm very yeah, proud of you. Yeah. And I and I run forward. Charge, team! Oh. Don't don't have a name yet. Gotta get there soon. <laughs> All right. And uh, I want to take one action to uh, draw. Um, yep. Do I have to take an action to get to an enemy? Is there any enemy close enough to me, or do I have to move to get? No, you would have to move up into the room. Okay. So <clears throat> see, that's my second action to move. Uh, so the same one that uh, Thee is attacking, I think. Okay, I'm great. Super stoked to do some teamwork, uh, and I'm going to. Oh, I drew the I drew the fire blade. By the way, to be clear, okay. and I don't activate it because I know that doesn't last longer than one turn. <laughs> <laughs> um, I just want to strike normally with it. Normal Can old strike. Okay. Normal strike. Okay. Um, sure. Yeah. Again, you get this like whiff of of overwhelming. Like you lived in a fishery and this is still like whew, a heady a heady scent as you're entering that that as you get closer to these things i was gonna say if i can i do a brutish shove instead so it's like a regular or is that another action on, on top of the brutish shove yeah, i will look it up but i believe okay. it can only be done after you hit something after I hit, okay it's fine uh, i will hit me normally because I can do this. Uh, let's see. <laughs> I know you said British, but it sounded like British. The British stuff, yeah. Which isn't very polite. Like, yeah. <laughs> it's not a British. I say, old chap, get away from me. <laughs> what do you mind? Uh, so we were, anybody in chat who is British, I'm so sorry. That was not uh, that was a terrible <laughs> accent. Uh, so I rolled to hit um, 18. 18 is going to do it. You yeah. barely manage it, but you get just enough power behind your swing, your swing to dig into this thing's uh, awesome. Uh, that is, is that a D12 plus strength, or is that a D? Uh, if it's the long sword, if it's the fiery long sword, it's D8. Plus D8. Strength. Okay. Plus one extra fire damage. If, but it's not on fire. But it's not on fire. <laughs> it uh, automatically, okay. even when it's not on fire, it automatically deals. Oh. Fire. When you oh. make it on fire, it deals one D6. Oh, that's dope. Okay, uh, I rolled a. F- Sorry, you said a lot of numbers. I rolled a four plus. Plus uh, one fire. So five. Did you add your strength to that? I did not. Uh, so eight. I was like, I'm missing a number. It's eight total. Okay, eight total points of damage. And you one of them was fire. So is it on that, fire now? Well, I was gonna. I was about to say as fire. as you cut into it. You note that its leaves are coated in this like waxy substance that seems to catch especially easily. And despite the fact that it's just this like spark of flames, this bloom of of fire like erupts across the creature's side, dealing an additional four points of Ooh. damage because it is weak to fire. Yeah, I, I turn turn my head and yell. By the way, weak to fire. Finally, something <laughs> weak to fire. Am I right? <laughs> <laughs> this creature does not look happy and it has taken significant damage and now I believe that takes us to Waverly's turn hey uh, I'm gonna first raise my shield and Shields then up. I'm going to after seeing that display Gristle just did uh, I'm going to cast Burning Hands okay so if you want to catch both of them you're also going to catch your allies. <laughs> if you want to target the one that they have not targeted, though, you could just catch the one and, and they would be safe. I'll catch the That's one. That's up to you. Just the one? Oh, yeah. you're not going to go for You're not going to go for the two? They, they've got high. It's the He's got huge reflexes. He's going to be able to I don't want to move. <laughs> All right. I already used my action to raise my shield. <laughs> I gotcha. I'm not going back, Jim Jam. <laughs> All right. So you try to blast 
the one uh, that so far has not been hit with a fan of flames that just come erupting from your hands. I need to make a basic reflex save, yep. which I'm decent at. Uh, but decent. not when I roll a two. That brings yeah. my total to a 12. Yeah. Uh. Huzzah, you're going to take full damage. Mm. <laughs> you love it. Here it comes. Ooh, 10. 10 nice. points of damage. Nice. 10 points of damage plus four because of their weakness makes it 14 points of damage. And this thing, again, its leaves just burst into flame, most of them curling, uh, becoming blackened little chilly things as parts of it just fall away. And it's thrashing around for a moment, trying to, trying to put the flames out. Heavy turn. And now it's theirs. No. Now they get to respond. <laughs> now comes the fun. One of them is just gonna try to whoop on Gristle. Because Gristle ran up. She's big and scary. It is just gonna reach out with this like vine tentacle and just try to batter you into submission. It's first attack. Man, we took a whole week off. I come back, first roll I've made tonight, and it is a natural 20. No, I was like, this could go one way or the other. <laughs> you look too happy, I don't yeah. like <laughs> A natural 20, which brings my total uh, to a critical hit, uh, for sure. 31 to hit. Uh, oh my God. Wow. <laughs> That's gonna be bad news. That's gonna be bad news. I'm gonna roll two damage dice. Oh man, two damage dice. This is all bludgeoning damage. Uh, oh, not great. Wow, not great at all. Uh, that is only gonna be eight total points of bludgeoning oh, damage. Perfect. I thought there was gonna be a teen at the I'm end of that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was kind of hoping for a lot more from that too, but when you roll <laughs> crappy on your damage, even on a crit, it doesn't feel good. Does not feel good. Uh, this thing is, uh, it's going to take its second action to do the same thing. Uh, oh, oh, one thing that I forgot. One thing that I forgot. Uh, as it burns, it burns very easily, but you note that the stench actually is growing in, like, it, it just, like, blooms with the flames. And it is becoming very difficult to just be around this thing. It smells <laughs> so bad. Uh, it is going to try to batter you again. Right. That time, also pretty good. We're looking at a 23 to hit. for its Christ, it definitely is. <laughs> All right. So then, ooh, a good roll to you. It's like nine points of damage from its second strike. Oh my God. <laughs> so that was 17 uh, total. We got too comfortable. third action, it's actually just going to move. It's just going to step back away from you. Um, as it moves... Uh, normally, you have an attack of opportunity reaction, and normally you would be able to make it. But this thing, as it's moving, and it just like you almost can't tell that it's moving at first. It just looks like it's just like waving, almost like grass in the breeze. And then all of a sudden, you realize that the lower half of its body had moved away from you, and then the whole top half just kind of uh, sinks up, and you don't even have time to react as it has an action ability that allows it to move without triggering any reactions. Wow. And that takes us over to his buddy, who does not like getting blasted with fire. So what he is going to do is, instead of moving anywhere, he is just going to uh, uh, basically like this this bunch of leaves right around where its chest area would be, sort of spread apart. And there's this what looks like a giant almond that bulges out of it and then pops forth and fires right at you. Uh, as it makes a seed pod attack against you, Waverly. Now, you do have your shield up, which is good, yeah. uh, but I'm going to hit an armor class of 25. Oh, God. Whoa. Rolling good, huh? Yo, that that dragon didn't seem too bad. Now. Yeah. yeah. The dragon was easy. <laughs> These leaves and vines are very scary. <laughs> Okay. Everything since uh, the dragon has gotten worse. Yeah. <laughs> I wonder if it's because we're leveling up. <laughs> oh, maybe. <laughs> Waverly, uh, the important question is, is that a critical hit? Uh, 25? Yeah. No. The second important question is, do you want a shield block with your reaction? Absolutely. Okay. Then you're going to get to reduce this damage by the hardness of the shield. Which is fine. And the total is seven points. Uh, 
Uh, Did you so minus you just, my five? Or no, I, I didn't do that math. So you go okay. ahead and uh, nice. so you can do that on your end. Two. You raise the shield up and you feel this like, you feel the impact and you guys can all hear this reverberating like as the seed hits the shield arm and you feel the impact in your arm. Like it still hurts a little bit. Uh, and it is then going to move up to you, Waverly. And nope. now, like, as you're lowering the shield, that overwhelming stench just gets all up in your business. You realize that starting your turn near this creature is about to get crazy when you start your next turn. Uh, but before we get to go to that, we do get uh, Ingot gets his chance to, yeah. uh, to add to this. So Ingot has been watching all of this going on and takes the similar formation as they did before. Uh, mm -hmm. Takes a ruby red stone out of his pocket and then stands next to Waverly and this creature and also casts Burning Hands. Also casts Burning Hands. If, that it, it is a 15 foot cone. And if you'll allow it, Ingot is not quite as discerning. He doesn't have quite the mastery over this spell that Waverly does. Uh-huh. So he's just I would, gonna, here's the thing. I would absolutely allow it and encourage you to catch all of your friends and all of your spells. However, Inga would note that because this the other creature that's deeper into the room had actually taken steps back away, mm -hmm. it's no longer in that 15-foot cone. So yeah. as much as I would love you to burn your friends, uh, <laughs> it, wouldn't, it wouldn't catch the other creature in that in that wave, so I won't make you do it. Copy. <laughs> uh, so but I will it. make a reflex save for my first critter. And that is a 21. Oh, that's over my DC. All right, but that's still half damage. Half. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. OK, just 2d6 fire damage. That's five. <laughs> five points. Plus four. Uh, halved is three plus four for it's its weakness. Seven. So you actually deal seven points. And boy, again, there's this like as as the leaves burn, the smell just grows increasingly unbearable. Ugh, it's gross. It's terrible. Overwhelming. <sighs> as our good buddy Fee is about to find out, because you are uh -oh. starting your turn in the range of its uh, magnificent odor. Fucking rot <laughs> all so over again. <laughs> I need to make a fortitude save. Oh boy. I can't. All right, I, was, I was muted. I was just speaking to the dead already. Uh, that's a 16. <laughs> 16, all right. Uh, you know, you feel like if you guys hadn't burned it, you might have been, like, before, that would have been okay. But now that it's been burned, the smell is so much more overpowering that it just starts, you start to feel sick. Mm. You are flat-footed for the round. Disrespectful. How dare you do that? <laughs> of all people to do that to, disrespect. <laughs> the game the designer is excited. Oh. <laughs> no, because the rogue who needs flat foot. Yeah. <laughs> disrespectful. <laughs> all right. Um, ah, screw it. I'm going to go up and slash at the one that. Get it. Yeah. Yeah, I'm going to slash just the one that was closest, the one that uh, Bristol also well, came to swing at. As a tactically minded person, I'll mm -hmm. offer you this. Okay. If you went to the one that walked up to Waverly, you could establish flanking pretty Let's easy. Let's do that. I like that. So I like that you would be able to catch that one. Uh, he would definitely be on the lookout for that. So yeah, you just move back uh, towards the door and now there's one of these creatures between you and Waverly, which gives you the advantage you need. This is why I don't need vegetables in the first place. <laughs> uh, so I'm gonna make my first attack. Okay. say 27. Yeah, that does oh. it. And because this creature is flat-footed, it is a critical hit. Yes! All right, this is where the fun part comes out. <laughs> all right, so, all right. Seven. Nine, 16, plus four. 20. Good Lord. We're already in the 20s. Okay, I've got problems. <laughs> you stab this crispy salad. 23. 23, <laughs> 23 uh, total, counting my uh, regular sword and my um, sneak attack damage. Wow. Ooh, 23 points of damage. Uh, 
you just walk up right behind this thing and it's like turning on a weed whacker. You just start <laughs> hacking and slashing at it. Bits of charred leaf and vine go flying everywhere. And by the end of it, there's nothing but like this stump of wriggling vines that very quickly lose cohesion and the creature falls apart entirely. It is dead. And you just see Waverly and Ingot on the other side with like smoking hands. The two of us is like. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. I don't like plants. They smell weird. <laughs> These <laughs> ones definitely smell weird. <laughs> yeah. uh, <laughs> Gristle. Speaking of weird smelling plants, uh, Gristle, I need you, starting your turn in this aura, to make another one of these beautiful fortitude saves. Should be no problem for you. Uh, it is a 16. A 16 oh. again. In normal times, that might have done it. But these burning leaves smell so much worse that you are flat footed. Fine. I only have 15 hit points and a flat, but it's fine. Um, <laughs> okay, wait. Uh, what does that mean again? I'm sorry. <laughs> just, it means I just... that your armor class is reduced by two. That's what it was. Okay. Uh, I'm going to live forever. I said it the episode one. I'm definitely going to be no fine. Uh, I turn on my sword. Yeah. I think we need more fire is the problem. <laughs> uh, what I have extrapolated from this uh, situation. So I need one action to turn on the fire. Um, All righty. I'm going to attempt to hit it and then if i hit it i would like to do um a brutish shove because i have yet I, to do it yet because i never make it <laughs> i know and i and i hate to be the bearer of bad news but you would have to move because it had moved away from you oh, you have moves. to take another action to get to it again because it had moved away from you so unfortunately Fine. you'll be able to attack but not get that brutish shove in i guess uh come here you plenty <laughs> crunchy snack and i <laughs> <laughs> Didn't mean to call it a snack. I'm sorry. I don't know what's wrong with me today. Uh, I rolled a, what did the number say? 15 plus. Oh, like, geez. I don't know, nine. So 24. Yeah. If, if, if we're starting at 15, that's a, <laughs> that's a hit. <laughs> that's a safe hit. Yay. Then roll damage. And because you activated the sword, you won't deal one additional point of fire damage. You'll deal 1d6 I... additional points of fire damage. Right. What, uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Six. Okay, so. I thought you froze in the video. <laughs> no, I just my I I'm a little dyslexic. Like I'm yeah. I'm, I'm actually a little dyslex dyslexic with numbers. So once in a while, especially if I'm a little tired, I can't. I just shut off. Sure. <laughs> it's cool. So that's a five plus my strength is three. So that's eight plus six is. It's oh, it's an less. additional one d six. Sorry. A one d six. Sorry. Okay. Yeah. Okay. 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 So not six. That's a a one. So not as cool. So that was a mm -hmm. nine total. Is that correct? All right. Yeah. Plus, it's plus the four for its weakness, which gets us to this creature is very nearly dead, but not quite there. Oh, it's burning. It's shrieking. There's almost more time, like I'm probably going to die. Shrieky <laughs> sound. But it is still up and active. Uh, and that actually highlights the, the three action economy and why sometimes standing and attacking isn't your best bet. Tactically, move forcing your opponents to move can really hamper their ability to unleash the brutish shove that they hey, want. Cool, to thanks, do. Jim. Thanks for showing that. It's really. Cool that <laughs> I just wanted to um, demonstrate the tactics of moving around. Yeah, because I guess we weren't doing it enough. We we're just trying to be, you know, just use all of our actions to do something cool instead of moving around. <laughs> you can use your actions to ruin somebody else's turn. That's I yell, can someone please kill this? I don't know if I can go another round with this thing. Uh, also, it sells real bad, but definitely that's probably not my fault. <laughs> but it's definitely not my fault. Mm -hmm. A tagline for Gristle. Establishing, <laughs> fault, <laughs> establishing blame is very important. <laughs> very important. Uh, Waverly, you are up next. When I turn around to face this creature, how far away am I from it? Uh, you're about 25 feet away from where it is currently. And you don't have to turn around. It's actually sort of, it's as ahead of you in the room. So it's it's oh. like, there there's there's Fee about 10 feet in front of you. Uh, then about 10 feet further into the room is Gristle. And then just next to Gristle is this creature. I'm going to move forward in between uh, Fee and Gristle, but not hitting Gristle, and I will cast a Burning Hands. Another Burning Hands. I'll roll a reflex save. Rest in peace, this building. Oh! Yeah, right? <laughs> this very flammable building. <laughs> 
that's another 20 on the die. Stop. Uh huh. Yeah. That's another 20 on the die. Is a 30 a success? <laughs> yes. Evil. Well, since it's a 20 on the die, it becomes a critical success, which means this creature will actually take no points of damage from that burning hands. Uh, even from the point. weakness? Mm, maybe, yeah. Uh, yeah, because it has to it take the hit. damage for its weakness to enact. Wow, what a what a waste of one of my very limited spells. <laughs> you can see, using proper tactics, you can make other people waste their turns. That's jim, what jim. I'm trying to tell you. <laughs> jim spelled out for us like a few times now. <laughs> jim just needs to stop rolling 20s. Yeah. Or does he need to start rolling more 20s? <laughs> no. Consider that side of the argument as we move on. Oh, no. To my favorite turn. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna try to hit I think I'm gonna try to hit Gristle with uh, the old vine, the old bludgeon no. now Gristle, unfortunately you're flat footed because of the horrible stench yes. that is all overpowering your senses so your mm -hmm. armor class is reduced by 2 currently so I'm gonna go from 19 to 17 the first attack with a 6 on the die it's a 17. Mm -hmm. If it meets, it hits, or it doesn't hit? Yeah, meet, it, uh, meet goes to the attacker, so that is gonna just whoop you across the face. If you weren't feeling, if you weren't reeling from this horrible stench, mm -hmm. you could have dodged that attack. But you're a little flat-footed. And you're gonna take nine points of bludgeoning. Oh no! I am still alive. <laughs> you're still alive. This creature, knowing it's outnumbered, sees Waverly standing there across the room, and instead of instead of following up with another attack from its vine, it is going to shoot one of these seed pods just right out at Waverly. It doesn't have as good of a chance to hit, but I've been rolling hot tonight, so it might still get you. That's a dirty 20. No! I hate you. <laughs> Waverly! You're gonna take five points of bludgeoning damage as this oversized almond just wraps you in the in the side of the face. Oh no! Knocks one of your teeth loose. You're like, oh, oh no! Nose now. No. Your teeth. Don't take my teeth. <laughs> I'll take your hands or your teeth. You pick. Oh, oh my god! <laughs> what game is this? You started playing all of a sudden. <laughs> it's a really uh, morbid inside joke. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and unfortunately. This creature, its tactical movement that I demonstrated did kind of put it in a corner. So I'm going to say it doesn't have the opportunity to really get anywhere away from you at this point. It sort of cornered itself. Maybe that wasn't such a good tactic to begin with. <laughs> so that'll take us to the next uh, the next person, and it's Ingot. Hmm. Ingot is going to sort of assess what's going on. He he has a, a, a chemical mind coming where, where he was coming from and can sense that maybe this smell isn't the greatest. So he's gonna go to an old favorite and pick up the little crystal and uh, move a little bit forward and cast Ray of Frost. Ray of Frost. Holy buddy good. Spell attack. Spell attack. Oh no. That's a four on the die. So oh. a 12. <laughs> 12 is not quite going to do it. You unleash oh, this no. ray of frost and the creature, like part of its body just like parts as the vines separate and it forms this hole and the ray of frost just splats into the wall, freezing the wood of Abanye's cottage, but not catching this creature. Uh, so I, I, it, I wouldn't have had to move since I have an action left. Yeah. I would like to, to def like defend. That's one of the actions, right? Like hold for defense. I am not one hundred percent certain. I know it's something that like it seems like you should be able to do it. Um, we'll deal with it if it, if something yeah. attacks you. We'll deal with it. Okay. We'll, uh, I, I, I will, think it's I will... a plus one to AC, but I'm not sure. It makes sense. Yeah, I, I'm. I it, it's striking a memory. I just for some reason I'm not like recalling the 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 certainty. I can't tell you, but it sounds right. I'll, let me put it this way. I'm going to give you a plus one to your armor class because you used an action to, to be on the defensive. So even Bracing if I'm not himself. allowed to do that, I'm going to yeah. do it. <laughs> <laughs> sounds good to me. That'll take us to the next round. Fee, you are currently not close enough to one of these creatures to be in its powerful stench aura. So you don't need to roll a save this turn. 
and you are no longer flat-footed. Okay. Um, I basically just want to roll over Ingot and then get inside of flanking range with this creature, like, aligned with Grizzle. Sure. Cool. Uh, yeah. That works and for me. I'm just going to slash at this thing. It is nasty. I'm tired of plants. There's so <laughs> much fire. <laughs> it smells bad. <laughs> yeah. Those are all accurate things. Go ahead and make your attack. Uh, that's 17 plus 9. 26. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's a dead plant. I mean, roll damage, because who that's doesn't want to know plant. how much damage you're going to do, but it's a yeah. dead plant. <laughs> Is that flat foot? Is uh, it a critical? Oh, yeah, because you, you, yeah, you've, uh, yeah, it's a critical hit, and, uh, and it's flat footed to you because you are the flanking, so. <laughs> this is good. Oh, it's only 19 that time. Ah, oh, only 19 points of damage. No. Uh, you probably only dealt 19 points of damage because there just isn't enough plant left to stab. That's all <laughs> That's been, like, burned right. away. <laughs> so, uh, but you just hack apart whatever's left until the whole thing just stops moving. And then there's this moment of silence. The, the, the musky, terrible stench very quickly begins to dissipate. Uh, and... Wait, is it okay to kill plants? Oh yes! <laughs> <laughs> Just making sure. As you guys are wondering about the the moral the morality of mm. killing plant creatures, you actually uh, in the back of the room, actually near where you he and Russell are standing, there's this tipped over armoire with all these like vines wrapped around it. And you actually hear this like pounding coming from inside, and you hear this like. Does anybody hear that? <laughs> it's probably the stupid owner in his stupid closet. I don't know. Just, I'm gonna lay down for a minute. I'm just kind of like <laughs> lay down where I'm standing. <laughs> is anyone else injured? <laughs> Bristol is bleeding quite a bit. Yes. Oh, gather Got close. Points. Gather close. <laughs> We'll it's gather impressive. up. I'm gonna heal all of us. Okay. Sure. Uh, We're gonna leave that guy in the closet. We heal up. I don't care about yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. We're gonna, We're One thing gonna at a time. Real quick. Hang on. Here it comes. It's gonna be. Okay. You're gonna get back nine points. Ooh, that's a good one. That's a good yeah. heal. Was. <laughs> Blast everybody with Saren Ray's healing flames. Didn't someone have a <clears throat> couple of bottles of healing potion that I wasn't allowed to carry for some reason? I feel oh, like. Yes. Oh, you're still <laughs> injured. Yes. Um, I, I will. Have... I will do my um, once per day medicine check thing thingy magic. Yeah, I'm at 15 out of 32, so kind of. <laughs> I don't know if we can battle this uh, session. Might be bad for me. Oh, I just got a nat 20. So yeah. Plus eight, so 28 on my healing. Very nice. When you critically succeed on a heal check to treat wounds, you restore 4d8. Holy Ooh, cow. Oh gosh. To your target. 4d8. I don't, I gotta find 4d8. Why don't you go rescue this guy real quick? <laughs> <laughs> Thee and Ingot, it looks like uh, Gristle is being tended to as she's like laying there. Probably, maybe she's being a little over dramatic, though she does look also really beat up. So, you mm. know, maybe you got to give her that one. There is a lot but, of blood. Uh, <laughs> but you guys, once again, you hear this like, wait, wait, hello? Is that still here? Is somebody still here? Hello? Hey, what's going on? Hey. We're planned, people. <laughs> oh, Fee. <laughs> I know you're not <laughs> lying to poor Abanya. <laughs> oh, I'm I'm lying. It was just funny. Okay, okay. <laughs> and then I'll like start like cutting it open. <laughs> sure. Yeah, you just start hacking away some of this plant yeah. growth, and uh, a moment later, like one of the the doors to the tipped over armoire just falls open, and out spills this dark skinned man who like very quickly like pops up. He's like, oh, oh, okay. Oh wow. Sorry. Uh, thank you. Uh, sorry and thank you. I, I don't know. Um, Oh, that was scary. Are you, are you guys okay? I, I'm okay. Are you okay? It looks like, oh gosh, you guys got really hurt. Those things yeah. were, those things were nasty, huh? I, I hit in the armor because, oh wow, that I don't know. I was out in the forest. And they followed me home. And it's real bad. I didn't know what to do. I thought I was a goner. So I'm really glad to see you guys here. Really glad. Really glad. 
Why I do they? Offer... Why do they follow you from the forest? Do you look like something a plant would eat? Well, I mean, that is a great question. I, I mean, these things, these things, you know, I, I know they live in the area. They, they, they're smart. They're intelligent. I don't know why it would come here. I mean, they know to stay away from Atari because they know people like you live there and would burn them and slash them. And like, they, 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 they they're dangerous, but they always stay away. I, I don't know what caused them to follow me home. That seems absolutely, did. I don't know, maybe something happened to them or maybe they just were feeling really brave or the, I, I don't know. I've never had problems with these things. Never. Mm -hmm. I don't know what's going on. I'd offer you some skin cream, but uh, you know, I'm, I'm afraid I'm, I'm waiting on a order of herbs from Absalom. Uh, but I'll, I'll get in touch with you guys as soon as I get my order, you know, as a way to say thank you. You know. Oh, oh and she's digging through her bag. <laughs> we have your delivery of herbs. Here you go. Oh wow, that's uh, wow! I you came here, uh, you you saved my life, and then and you gave me the. That's fantastic. You know what? I'm, 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 uh, where where can I send some uh, some samples? I want to. <laughs> oh, we love uh, samples. We actually have samples ourselves. Crystal, yeah, show them. I, I, I'd give you some, but as you can see, I guess my place has been kind of smashed up here, so uh, I don't really have a lot that I can I, I can give you. But but I'm gonna uh, use these. Whip up something good. Uh, looks like uh, you could use something to put over those wounds so they don't scar. Yeah, I've got some. Uh, a great formula for that. It's really gonna, and it's gonna make you glow. You know, you're gonna be feeling like a, a, a million gold pieces. Uh, Ingot is gonna take out his crystal for detect magic, and I would like to do an Arcana check to see if I could determine like the source of maybe they were attracted to something in here, or what what would do something like that. Sure. Uh, as you reach out with your senses, trying to see if there are any magical auras in the area, you realize there aren't any. Huh. There, there's nothing. Like, yeah, it, it seems kind of strange. I don't. It, yeah. Would so, I be yeah, able to I maybe see. make a nature check? And yes, you, I would okay. love a nature check from anybody who would like to uh, to make one. <gasps> Natty twenty. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> Which is great because I only have plus one to nature, so twenty one. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> Shockingly enough, you have actually kind of you're looking down at the, the creatures and and what, what you saw them doing, and you realize that these are, these are creatures known as stinkweed shamblers mm -hmm. uh, in the area. And they are known to be out in the forests around Otari, and they are known to be relatively intelligent for a for a plant creature. Like, they, they actually, uh, they can understand some languages that they don't speak any themselves. Uh, they don't really have a society, per se, but they do... In general, they make th these aren't just like uh, animal creatures that mm -hmm. would just attack. Uh, they are nasty and they are dangerous to the unwary traveler, but it doesn't seem right that they would follow this guy home. It would be such a risk for them that they would follow him closer to Otari. If mm -hmm. they wanted to just kill him, like they would have done it when he was without any support or, you know, like it, it, it's weird that they would come after him. It's more, it's, it, it just doesn't fit their normal behavior patterns. Ingot is sort of looking over the smoldering wreckage of the chopped up plants and picks up a, a burnt leaf and looks at Ibanye and says, mm, are you familiar with a, a stinkweed shambler encampment anywhere near here? Uh, no, no. These two, I, I don't recognize. I, I've spotted some in my time in the, in the woods, you know, every, every couple of weeks you'll see one. Um, uh, these two aren't ones that I think I've seen before, but it's, it's sometimes difficult to tell. Uh, they grow and change very rapidly sometimes. Uh, but, uh, yeah, I, I don't know. And then it, uh, maybe they are new to the area. Maybe that's why they followed me here. They didn't realize that they were getting so dangerously close to Otari, I guess. That's, that could be it, I guess. I don't know. Ingot, then again, Ingot. if they're new to the area, does that mean that there's more growing? We might have a problem on our hands if there's too many of these out here. They're going to get more aggressive as they get competitive for food. And, well, they're not nice to begin with. So. Okay, here's your package. Uh, I kind of kick it over. <laughs> um <laughs> and uh, for all your pickle needs, don't forget about the veterinary. I just do a really quick <laughs> spiel. I throw it at his feet. Um, 
if you if you nerds want to keep talking, I'll be waiting outside. This is taking way too long for me, and also I'm covered in blood, so I'm just gonna wash that off real quick. Don't look at me, don't look at me, don't look at me. I just go inside. Jim, Jim, you said that like there was stuff scattered all around, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The, these creatures, when they came in here, they were apparently just smashing the place up, um, knocking things over. It doesn't look like intentional. Like this wasn't like a ransacking, but it looks mm-hmm. like just like at like almost like. Bull in a china shop. Yeah, basically, yeah. They just, uh, they were just knocking things around because they didn't know what, like, I don't know. That's what they did. Um, Hmm. uh, Banyes, things like, yeah, well, they were, they were definitely coming after me first after I locked myself in the armoire. They kind of, I guess, they, they, uh, they shut that tight so I couldn't get out. And then they were content to just, uh, you know, go through the place. I don't know. They might have been looking, uh, they might have been interested in some of the different, uh, seeds and plants that I keep. And you note that there are like a lot of like hanging herbs and potted plants around. Uh, so maybe, maybe they were attracted to some of that and were curious about it or something. I, I don't know. But, uh, did you find anything interesting before? they had started to follow you. You know, not really, not really. It's just, that's what's so weird about this. It just seems so out of the blue. I mean, again, I'm, I know how to get around in the woods by myself. I've been doing it for, for decades. I can, you know, I, I can take care of myself. This is usually not a danger that I'd stumble into like an amateur. The fact that they followed me and came after me is the weird part. They just, it's so they never do that. So. You know, I'm really lucky you guys came along, but I guess it took me so unaware. I'm going to need to be more on my toes, I guess. Things are getting crazy. Have there been any other? You guys have been traveling around. Is there? Have you guys noticed anything weird on the road? Anything else? Well, yes, we have encountered some oddities along our adventures, but um, which direction did you come from again? Oh, I uh, was mostly up north of here. And Jim Jam, which on my map, Waverly has her map. What yeah. is north? Where he's pointing? Uh, sure, he, he can he can show you. Like, there's this big forested area, and he's he's like, oh, I usually just travel all around through. There's a bunch of uh, paths around here that I take uh, where I can get a lot of a lot of good mosses and herbs that make great ingredients for some of my for my my salves. Hmm. There's nothing yeah. of particular note up there. Like, there's no like, oh, here's the, you know, uh, it's just, it's just again this big forested area. Yeah, it's just like, I, I can't. I, just, I feel stupid now thinking about it. I can't believe something like this happened. I mean, I've been doing this for so long. I guess I should have been way more on my toes. I got, no. I got too cocky. No, it no, it's thing. okay. Um, in my um studies and learning of nature, if this is something they don't normally do. And Ingrid, perhaps you'll know as well. Um, my guess would be perhaps they've either run out of a food source or perhaps were fleeing from something. And if these creatures are fleeing from something, then, well, it might be quite devastating. This is not the first danger that has been encountered on this route for these package deliveries. Uh, the brave Nerala was uh, attacked by a basilisk. Also strange to see in the area. That is what? very strange to see in the area. I mean, I, there's been nothing that nasty around for for years. I mean, look, Otari's got its fair share of dangers. We're, you know, it's wild country out here, but a basilisk attacking people on the road? Hmm. You and know, it, the, it does seem like strange this. that there was a baby dragon underneath a fishing town that was also somehow found by a plethora of kobolds. Mm. Coincidentally. I kind of stick my head back in the door. I mean, they're all gone now, so do we have to really keep worrying about it? Or... I... It just keeps happening. Mm. If they're all connected to some event. Or some person. Uh, Like magic or food? food well, we magic, just don't know either. yet. But what I do know is that we have another task to complete. So 
Abanya, thank you so much for your hospitality and um, hopefully you are able to clean up your shop. I'm sorry, we cannot stay to help. Yeah, we don't do that, uh, but oh, here's oh, your package. No. You, you, yeah, you have all done way more than enough, and I can see you're eager to get on the road. Don't let me keep you with uh, my rambling. I, I just need to be more careful on the road. I guess we should all be more careful out on the road. Mm-hmm. Uh, something's got, something's got these monsters all riled up. You know, we just uh, need to be on our toes. But you know, that's that. You know what? Uh, maybe we were getting a little too comfortable, and this is just, you know, uh, a reminder to be more careful. We're not Absalom. This is Otari. You know, we're out in the thick of it. It is, out there. it is a difficult ask, but Abanye, you may be the last defense for these creatures before they reach the town. We're all counting on you. Or you could build a fence. <laughs> that was a lot of pressure or... there. <laughs> <laughs> no pressure. <laughs> but continue need... your work. You're, you're doing wonderful work here with your teas and your bombs and your herbs, and we have another task to get to mm. um, that involves those copper cap mushrooms so shall we be on our way lead the way i will lead the way thank you <clears throat> i oh. open the door <laughs> go back outside <laughs> even though i've just come back inside, and come yeah. back inside. <laughs> I, I ask about it do you have magic no. really limited stuff i know people call me a druid but like i i you know i'm I just run a business i mostly make Leave-in hair conditioner and organic <laughs> skin creams. It's you know. Did you make a healing basis. potion? Uh, I mean, if you're looking for something like that, Magaloy is probably your best bet. She actually does more of the real heavy alchemical work. It's not going to be magical, but the elixir of life is you know it's just good stuff. Some people say that too much magic healing is actually bad for you in the long run. So you know, eh, stupid. They don't get stabbed very often. Um, <laughs> If the two of you work together, per se, could you make something better? Oh, it's possible. I mean, sometimes she comes out asking for different things. I imagine that if she was, uh, uh, I imagine there are probably some things I could get her that uh, might might allow her to make some more potent brews. Sure. Perfect. Good to know. Don't get stabbed or killed or eaten by plants. Lock your doors. Don't go in the woods again. Bring fire. Okay. Those all sound like good, good, good piece of advice. You too. You too. Yes. Because I'm stabbed. there. No, never. I have three brave adventurers. I'm their biggest fan. <laughs> I walk outside. <laughs> all right. You leave a banye. And you're outside. Um. You know that you have uh, another stop you could make uh, at Slab Hill, uh, which, according to Waverly's map of the of the area, and it looks like she's already drawn like a little dotted line to Slab Hill on your route. Uh, it'll take you maybe ten minutes to get there. Get your copper cat mushrooms, uh, and then be back in Otari by about lunchtime. Should go smoothly, even with that little hiccup with the stinkweed chandeliers. You're getting it done day is going well so what do you do i picture waverly is kind of in front of everyone with the map just like trotting off the exact direction but gristle said she was leading so i picture gristle being like uh uh yes this way is yeah i'm sort going. of like bumping her as <laughs> she's walking like yes that like as she's putting him like uh-huh and i can move her hand nope this way yes. <laughs> <laughs> that's exactly what i'm picturing <laughs> Uh, Ingot is going to hang back with Thee uh, and has noticed sort of the these inquiries that have been happening. Uh, Ingot can't help but notice that Thee is concocting something, perhaps. I like the idea of poisons to potentially debilitate our foes. It makes it easier for us and we die less. And also, potions are great. That way, um, we don't have to rely solely on Waverly, so to speak. Ingot is able to offer their services if they're needed in the magic department. That would be greatly appreciated. I don't understand magic. I like look at the short sword. I know this shocks things. I don't know why. Uh, a gristle sword lights on fire. Hmm. That that sh- metal shouldn't do that, but it does. 
Ingot can tell you the secret. What is the secret? Rocks. Ah. <laughs> what, do, and, what does that even mean then? Uh, he sort of holds up some of his crystals and uh, as sort of like a meditation technique starts rotating them in his hand. Hmm. Centering and stable, grounded, a portal into energy. Find your rock and you will be able to do magic. I look for a very sharp rock on the ground. I'm just going to pick it up. <laughs> like the magic of stabbing. There are many forms of magic, yes. Hmm. <laughs> I th I honestly, I feel like Thee probably thinks about this yeah. way too intensely. Right? Like it's, it's almost like he's trying to like make the rock levitate, and it's not going to. It but could. he's thinking about it. <laughs> Uh, he casts stab. <laughs> yep. <laughs> it's about this time uh, that you arrive at a place called Slab Hill. As I had mentioned before, it's a rather popular known spot for sightseers, picnickers. When you arrive, there's nobody here. It's this big grassy hill. And uh, it is uh, in several spaces you see these giant stone slabs, which is why it's called Slab Hill. Um, they didn't get super creative with the naming. Um, you know, a lot of people will like set up shop on one of these slabs and then just like hang out for a while. It's a nice, pleasant little spot. It's it's far enough away from Otari that it's usually pretty quiet here. Uh, we'll come out and stargaze or just have a picnic. Spend some quiet time alone. When you get there, you start looking around for these copper-capped mushrooms. Anybody who's participating in this little foraging exercise can make a survival check. Ooh. Uh, oh. 18. Also 18. Oh. 27. Oh, well. <laughs> Ten. <laughs> Still focused he on that rock. Nature. I really <laughs> am. <laughs> Learning magic somehow. Trying to make magic happen. <laughs> Not coming to you. The rest of you, though, you are wandering around, foraging for mushrooms, and it seems like every time you notice that a lot of them, uh, a lot of trampled patches around here. It looks like there's been some movement through here pretty recently. And then Waverly, you spot a bunch of them and you go over and you start to grab them and put them into this little, you know, your belt pouch so you can take them back to Magloy. And when you lift, lift your head again to look around for some more, you note that where there should be one of these big old slabs is a huge empty hole in the ground. The slab itself is sort of like lying off to the side like it had been pushed aside and you're just looking now at this staircase that goes down into the hill someone's been through here and they opened the barrow you guys i don't <laughs> think this is supposed to be here either some Thing has come out of there or something has gone into there mm. should we investigate In ingot's gonna move over to the slab but like how is it heavy i assume so right Would oh it be yeah movable? It, it's pretty heavy a, a person could move it if they were strong like gristle could probably handle it it would be strenuous work mm. but it could be done um but i will say that as you're looking over the slab, you note know there's like this mark on it. And it looks like it's been rubbed away, but it looks like like maybe a chalk mark of some kind that's recently been smudged. But you note it very clearly. And definitely like this it just strikes you. Waverly. The stone's been moved and marked. Take a look at this mark. Um 
can I roll to see what the mark might mean in my lore and I knowledge that I have? I would allow a religion check. Ooh, I Ooh. can do that. It's going to be a difficult DC. <laughs> Most of it's been worn away. Ooh, well, that's a 19 on the die, plus oh. a 27. Woohoo! It's very unclear at first. You're studying this thing, trying to like figure out where. Well, most of it got smudged out. So what would have been there? How is this? Thing? Looking at it, and suddenly you realize that it's time to go to break. No. For about six I'm minutes. I'm still taking. And then we'll come back and find <laughs> all about. We'll open this barrow, but first we're gonna take a little break. We're gonna okay. be back in just a few minutes. Uh, and then we will continue the adventure. I'm having a good time. This is good. Yeah. That was agonizing. This is the Pathfinder 2nd Edition Beginner Box, and we want to show you what's inside. On the front is an amazing illustration by artist Wayne Reynolds, and on the back is everything showcasing what's in the box and what to expect. To start, we have an instructional guide that guides you through the contents of the Beginner Box. This explains what Pathfinder is, gives you directions on how to play the solo adventure, and how to play with your friends. Then we have four pre-generated characters. One of Valorous the Fighter, Ezrin the Wizard, Kyra the Cleric, and Mauricio the Rogue. Each of these pre-generated character sheets aims to help new players get into the game faster. You'll find helpful information on the side regarding the game, all the stats filled out for you, rules to help you play your chosen character, along with some backstory of the Pathfinder iconic you chose. You'll also notice that the character sheets have color-coded dice on the side, and in the box, you'll get one set of these, matching the colors to help affiliate newcomers to the different types of dice needed to play the game. To further help players are these reference cards. These have information explaining what actions you can take during your turn, what critical hits mean or critical misses, and more information to help you stay in the game and not in the books. And here is the Hero's Handbook. This handbook starts with a solo adventure, continues on with a synopsis of the game rules, and guidelines to create your own hero. The available ancestries you have available to you are the Dwarf, Elf, and Human. You can then customize to become a cleric, fighter, rogue, or wizard. 
One of the important things to take away from the materials in this box is that the rules presented are the same as the Pathfinder 2nd Edition Core Rulebook. We did not modify the rules, only elaborated on them in the beginner box. If you and your friends decided to make their own characters instead, inside are six blank character sheets. Similar to the pre-gen character sheets, these also have helpful information about the game on the side and plenty of space to create your own hero. Now as for the player telling the story, we have the Game Master Guide. This has everything you need to run a Pathfinder 2nd Edition adventure. As a full adventure, you can run right away, teaching the Game Master and players the rules of the game every step of the way, along with materials to run your own campaigns with a horde of monsters to battle against. To help run the included adventure, you'll find a double-sided flip mat inside the box. This is a 24 by 30 inch playmat coated in a substance that allows you to mark and draw various things with a dry erase marker should you need them. To help populate your table, the box contains three pawn sheets representing the monsters in the Game Mastery Guide, player tokens, NPCs, and action tokens, which can be used with the player reference cards to help keep track of how many actions you have left during your turn. Along with the pawn sheets, you also get these bases for you to use to help them stand up at your table. And finally is a presentation of the Pathfinder Society, where either you're playing at home, online, conventions, or your favorite local hobby store, you can join thousands of Pathfinders today and start playing at paizo.com forward slash organized play. On the back is an advisory for those wishing to continue the adventure, mentioning the Troubles in Otari adventure that continues the story of the beginner box, along with options to continue building and expanding your stories. And that's everything in the Pathfinder 2nd Edition Beginner Box. You can start your adventure now by ordering yours at paizo.com or by visiting your friendly local game store to begin your journeys. Stay safe and farewell, and we hope to hear about your adventures soon. Corporeal creatures, and next up is Gabe. Gabe, when was your first experience with the incorporeal creature? Well, actually, Jim Jam, um, <laughs> for talking Pathfinder, it was <laughs> it was that weird blue floaty. Um, mm -hmm. <laughs> and <laughs> so just for everyone who was watching at home, uh, I want you to know the name I gave on the deathbed was also fake. <laughs> <laughs> What was it? I can't remember. It was like oh, it's weird. It Classic fee mm. trick in the floaty. Mm. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, I still you even don't had me do. fooled. I bought it, man. I thought you had revealed a deep secret, mm -hmm. but nope. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> a mystery. Always a mystery. <laughs> Tuvo Navari. Yes, I have it. Tuvo Navari. <laughs> even though I wasn't there, <laughs> I wrote it down. It doesn't mean it's not a significant name. Mm -hmm. Speaking of mysteries, there is a symbol written in chalk on a slab that should be covering up a staircase leading down into a barrow hill, but it is not. And that could be a problem. You're looking, Waverly, you had made a check. Pretty good check. High result. This thing is so smudged up. And I will tell you this, you know, this wasn't just like an X or like a check mark or something. There was some kind of like symbol drawn here, but there's just not enough of it remaining to like give you a firm grasp on exactly what it is. But there is something about it that gives you an incredibly uneasy feeling. You don't like it. it doesn't sit well with you. You can't quite grab what it is in your mind. Ingot, I... I'm not able to quite make it out, but I will tell you that it makes me feel... 
Like it's something quite negative, not positive. Like an insult. Or like it makes you hungry? (laughs) Um, No, not that one. No, like uh, something evil may have Ah. resided here, or perhaps it was a symbol uh, um, of something evil, but it definitely makes me feel like it's not good. Hmm. Mm. So there's a hole in the ground and a slab that is bad. The slab is moved. And you think it's still down there or not down there? Well, based upon this symbol and the things that we were just speaking about, Crystal, I'm not sure if you were there inside when we were speaking with Abanya, but Ingot and I and Thee were just discussing how all of these events happening around Otari could be connected. And if we don't find out what this symbol means, well, what could be down there? Perhaps we'll never know what's linking all of these events. Jim Jam, I'm yes. actually trained in occultism. Can mm-hmm. I make a related role uh, to the crypt and then like getting this information? Yes, I would definitely allow that. It's an 18 total. Ooh. I will tell you that what you know of the area and this particular tomb mm-hmm. is that it once belonged to a famous, infamous human woman warlord named Karsten Starhand. She died a while ago. She was very powerful, um, very violent. But she also was sort of powerful enough that she was still given a place. Like, you know, she was a she was a power player in the area in her time. So she was still given, you know, a place of, you know, a place of honor. You know, she didn't, mm-hmm. uh, she managed to keep her hands just clean enough that she wasn't like, you know, shunned from society. But I mean, she's, she's not known for being a pleasant person. Um, that's about all you can gather from that. Pass all that on. This is why I don't. I don't like. Mm, no, no. And like that rock that he was carrying, mm-hmm. uh, Ingot. Mm-hmm. He like just throws it to the side and like wipes his hands. Magic terrifies me. I if if do I one of two things happened here is my assumption. Either they got up and walked out on their own, or someone got them up and had them walk out. Both are bad. Mm. Or they could still be inside. Which is why I think we should venture down there. Oh, my sword. To... <laughs> if we really think th- that is best, then Ingen concurs and well, he'll ready himself. Specifically, I want to make sure that whatever was residing here in this tomb is laid to rest and they have been taken upon the next phase of their life. Um, and we don't want them reawakening in this life. Um, or perhaps um, leaving something behind. Um, so I do think we need to go down there just to check. Uh, so hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. <laughs> We're all talking about how this this whole tomb situation makes us feel very bad. Mm. Uh, not hunger, but uh, more like spooky scary. Yes. Um, we, uh, I, I think we all noticed that this the, the ground looks trampled like someone's been hanging out here with the mushrooms. Mm. Um, there's a symbol that's been rubbed off on mm. top of this, which means uh, either the thing came out and was like, oh, I don't want anyone to know what's in here, rub, 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 or someone <laughs> from outside that was not in the tomb uh, broke a seal of some, haps, or of some kind, perhaps. Uh, not that I know anything about a cult or, or a dead thing. I mean, I've only met one ghost in my life, so that's mm. all I know. Uh, and you want to go down in there to look for... To make but, sure that there are no undead entities down there. We could, yeah, other, another idea. We could just push this closed. Well, oh. if Gristle is scared. Ah, mm. uh, Ingrid. <laughs> Gristle, if, if we just close it, we'll never know whether or not an undead creature has escaped or not. But it, 
if it's escaped, it'll just, you know, we will find it in town one day. If it's not escaped, we've just trumped it. I'm not scared. I, I, uh, what if you know, there is a living creature that has opened the slab and is down there, and by us closing it, we're entrapping them to their death. Ingit is already walking down the stairs, and you can hear echoing out, Gristle sounds scared to Ingit. God uh, damn it, Ingit! And I just run after him. Ingit, as you're as you're nearing the uh, as you're descending the stairs, you do notice that there uh, does look to be like a, a muddy boot print on a couple of the stairs. Mm-hmm. Uh, going down or going up? Examining them. As yeah. You're examining them, uh, they appear to be going down. You don't notice any other tracks going up. Uh, if people are joining along, uh, Ingot will point this out to Thee. I also very quietly, falling behind Gristle, say, God damn it, Ingot, I agreed with, I agreed with Gristle. I agreed with Gristle. <laughs> As I follow Ingot, I'm going to cast uh, light upon my shield. Sure. I imagine it's very dark down there. What happened to our... with what the cleansing happens? light of Saren Ray. We do still have the torch, but... Did we bring it? We bring I didn't bring it this venture. I left it uh, back. And uh, hopefully Grissel won't be too angry. I'll let you light your shield up the slide. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's a good thing that shield is lit. Because it is dark down here. As soon as you leave, like, the little rectangle of light on the staircase that's spilling down, it is pitch dark. Except mm-hmm. for the light emanating off of Waverly Shield. Pretty soon, the staircase um, levels off on the ground and you see that in front of you is a very large hall. It has an opening at the far end. Between you and that opening at the far end are six stout pillars that hold up the ceiling. Uh, and in the because of the light, you can sort of see uh, ingot there. You're looking at these pillars and each is over car- is carved with overlapping symbols of star knives. Mm. Uh, Which is the last name, right? Uh, the... Indeed. Car- yes, um, that is uh, uh, Karsten Starhands was the name. Oh, I see. But uh, Thee would have known that star knives were a uh, were a, a weapon well known, known to be used. If you guys didn't oh. know, Star Knives look like giant shuriken with a handle in the middle because I had a look a couple weeks ago. Oh, <laughs> I did not know. They're like giant shuriken that have like, there's like no way to carry it. It's like uh, you can hold it from the middle, but it's like the. It's, it's just, like the anime giant shuriken. Yeah, yeah, it's exactly. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's like exactly Tifa's, uh, or not Tifa, uh, uh, y- Yuffie's Yuffie. thing. Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and these are like carved into these pillars, right? Yeah, it looks like um, there's just. Does it like hundreds of carvings on these pillars of star knives? Do they seem like um, they're sort of a similar pattern on each one, or does it seem like one has more than another, like uh, an amount? Sure, make a make a perception check. Yeah, I sure will. An eleven. An eleven. Different. There's so many of them mm. that it's it's actually hard to get a pattern or really make like a count just because there's so many. Like all the pillars are covered in these carvings. And then one last thing, I'm gonna do a quick Arcana check uh, with okay. my crystal. Sure. Did I get anything? Or oh, sorry, I didn't mean Arcana. I mean detect magic. Detect magic. You do detect the presence of a magical aura. Mm, now an Arcana check. <laughs> yes. Go ahead. Okay. I feel like if you tell us, he's gonna freak out. <laughs> Twenty-two. <laughs> yeah. Twenty-two. Um, it's really difficult. To, to pinpoint, um, mm. but the you know that there's something magical about the pillars or the carvings themselves, mm. um, but it's you can't quite identify exactly how they're magical, but you know they are. Uh, Ingot will go over to Waverly uh, and says, these pillars are magic. Do you know the secret? Um, let me have a look. And I'll it's, do... it's that they're rock. Oh, oh it's that they're rock. Oh, oh, I, he I don't has like a little quite... bit of a crisis. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I don't quite understand what you mean. Hmm. Exactly. 
Oh, is this some sort of joke that I don't know about? <laughs> hmm, not a joke. Um, in 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 Ingla, is this? Are you saying that these are uh, this is like a puzzle? Another hmm. cool puzzle that I can solve really quickly by picking something random. <laughs> These pillars contain <laughs> carvings, mm -hmm. and they are magical in nature. Uh, I want to poke one. Okay. You uh, solved it. <laughs> it was a poking so, puzzle. Yeah. <laughs> pick, a, pick a number, one through six. Yeah. Oh, no. There you go, too. Oh, for <laughs> real? Uh, this is really happening? Um, I, I go to the first one, and I just the very I, first poke, pillar. I poke one of the symbols, so we can keep so You guys are all standing there at the, at the entrance to this room, and, and Bristles, like, all right, I'll go poke one. I, I solved the last puzzle by randomly picking. Go I'm solve very this good puzzle at puzzle solving, yes. By <laughs> randomly picking. It's the clearest, best strategy. He's a couple of steps into the room, and you all hear, ka -chung, ka -chung, oh, ka -chung, oh, no. As doors <laughs> Jones, at what? the entrance to the stairs leading up, and the door at the very far end slam closed, trapping you all in this dark chamber. Oh, no. And as you're reaching out towards this pillar, you see the carvings of the star knives begin to glow. And one of them, right in front of your face, looks almost like a 3D image, like it's lifting off of the pillar and Uck. it's spinning faster Duck. and faster and faster. And then it flies from the pillar ah! at your face, Gristle. Ah! And it's Can time to I roll a mission. It? Can yeah. I dodge it? Can I dodge it? Possibly. Uh, all right, but all right. we are actually going to get into our first complex oh. trap encounter. Oh, uh, gosh. we're fighting. This trap is one that doesn't just activate once and go away. It's a uh, a complex trap is either a mechanical or magical hazard that once it's activated, it stays active and is a continuous threat until it's destroyed, disabled, or escaped. Oh. Uh, because of the way that that works, we're actually going to play this out in encounter mode, even though it's not like a monster that you're going to fight. Um, uh, but a hazard, unlike a creature, only takes actions according to a routine. So it has three actions, but it has uh. a specific routine that it does every turn without fail. That's um, cool. Until it's deactivated in some fashion, or you guys just somehow escape the room. That's but so uh, either way, <laughs> let's roll that initiative I like that and hint. start this encounter. Uh, 15. 15 for Gristle. 18 for Ingot. 18 for Ingot. Dirty 20. I don't want it though. <laughs> he doesn't want it at all. Waverly. Uh, 14. Oh, wait, my reflex is high. Screw y'all. This is fine. <laughs> I hope. So a complex trap rolls initiative as well. So it actually will go in the initiative order. However, so cool. sort of in a surprise round, uh, let's say, it does get to take one action uh, that it that it makes according to its routine, which is to fire one of these solid light star knife things right at Gristle's dome. So here it comes. It actually will make an attack roll, just like a creature would. Oh, okay. And it's going to hit armor class 14. Nope. All right, so as this all starts to happen, the doors slam shut. The room is sort of cast in this starry glow as all the star knives around the room begin to glow and whir and spin. And you can almost hear them spinning. It's like a bunch of fans all around the room. And then one of these star knives lifts off the pillar it's on and flings itself right at Gristle's head. She ducks aside. It goes spinning across the room and slams into the wall right next to Thee where it explodes, uh, becoming disparate sparks. Oh. And then we will start round one. Fee, the, the like shocks you, and you react quickly. This is like everything that you feared it would be. <laughs> what do you do? Oh no! I hate rocks. <laughs> <laughs> I, so, so both doors shut. Both doors have shut. <sighs> uh, I will tell you in this particular instance. Again, your goal is either to somehow destroy or disable this trap or escape it in some way. Um, it is up to you how you try to do that. Uh, okay, can I use an action to like analyze or like take a, take a quick glance at all of the pillars to see if any of them are reacting or doing anything different basically? 
Absolutely. Uh, you would be making a, your first action will be a seek action, which is just a perception check. Cool. All right. So that is 16. 16. So what you notice with the 16 is that all of the pillars seem to be active as a part of this, of whatever is happening here. You don't really notice anything out of the ordinary between okay. any of the other pillars. I will tell you that since it takes one action to do a seek action, if you're not happy with those results, you could try again, or you could try other actions. I'm letting you know, like you can, and there's, cool. it, it, it's up to you how you want to do that. But uh, uh, I'm going to try again one more time. Sure. Just Looking around. Through. Oh, that's much better. Uh, that is a 25. A 25. Okay, you notice with a 25 that in this very center of the room, there does appear to be um, some kind of uh, mechanism in the floor plates uh, at the floor. Like, there might, there is, despite the fact that there's clearly magic happening here, there is some kind of mechanical aspect to this. Cool. Um, and... It, as you are uh, quite accomplished with traps, uh, you note that if, if there was a place you were going to try to disable this, that you would start there. Cool. Uh, All right, so I'll use my third action to move to that spot. Sure, you rush over to where you see uh, the floor plates are kind of uh, actually somehow connected to the pillars yeah. and, and moving up and down a little bit. And that takes us next in the initiative order to Ingot. Mm. So Ingot sees the sort of get activated and move towards a certain spot. And mm -hmm. so while he's watching, first I wanted to see the, the, um, the what's it called? Star knife that shot at mm -hmm. Thee. Did it seem like it did damage to the environment that it hit or did it sort of uh, burst before? Make a, make a perception check. Okay. So interesting. Oh, 22? 22. Uh, you're looking at the spot. The, the star knife itself sort of exploded in the shower of light and is, is gone. But looking more closely at the stone, you do see a pretty nasty gouge in the stone. If that hit flesh, it would not be pretty. Hmm. Ingot starts considering what if it hit another pillar in some way. Okay. That's just in the back of his mind. Uh, but okay. he's going to make a move to get up next to Thee. Uh, okay. And uh, I envision this as like, you know, the um, the scene where the laser trap is activated. And so it's just going to like slide under all of these lasers uh, and <laughs> turn around and bump up uh, uh, really gently up against Thee while he's casting uh, Protective Ward. Okay, Protective Ward, a bubble forms around uh, you and Thee in the center of the room. Oh. protecting you, hopefully, from these mm. vicious star knives, and which are about gonna, to pop off. I'm sorry, Ingot's going to, like, curl up and brace mm. for this. <laughs> All right, curls up and braces, uh, because it is time for the trap to go through its routine. Its routine is pretty simple. It's going to fire star knives at random creatures in range. Uh, one of them is, go it, 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 it's al almost as if noticing movement, it is going to fire one of these uh, magical star knives right at Thee. Now Thee, remember you are in the protective ward, which I believe gives you an extra plus one to your- mm -hmm. AC. AC, all right. So your AC is one higher than normal. Star knife lifts up, uh, again, almost looking like a 3D image in a, at a movie, just lifts up off the pillar, spins around a couple of times, and then flings forward, hitting an armor class 21. Yep, that'll hit. Oh, oh, it stabs into you and explodes in a shower of light, much like the other one. However, you do also feel it pierce and slash your flesh as you take six points of force damage okay. as Oof. this thing cuts into you. Uh, the next one is going to fire one at, uh, at Ingot. Ingot move two, it seems mm. to, to hone in on that, is going to fling a star knife at you, uh, much like a creature, a mechanical complex trap still suffers uh, penalties for additional attacks, so its attacks do go down each time nice. it, it fires. Cool. Uh, but this one is going to hit an armor class of 16. Oh, that'll do it. All right, so even despite you barely got the ward up, not quite in time as the star knife flies through the air, striking you across the shoulder, dealing six points of force damage to Dang you. Dang it. I'm at uh, and 16. Then, ooh, that's rough. <laughs> uh, for my third and final action, I will fire a star knife. This one coming in at Waverly. 
because we've been Do spreading around. She hasn't, she hasn't, well, you haven't been, <laughs> you haven't, I haven't flung a fire knife at you yet, so I'm going to do that. Uh, this is my lowest bonus, so probably not going to hit you. No, with a with a three on the die. The star knife just goes whizzing past you, Waverly, slamming into the wall, gouging stone and exploding in a shower of light. That is my turn, and so now it is Gristle's turn. I kind of yell over, uh, so what? What are, are you guys just going to hang out on that bubble and not, are we, is this not a puzzle then? Or? They'd be distracted <laughs> with movement. Oh, I never got to go. <laughs> oh, were you before? I, I, I thought Waverly was at a 14 and Gristle was at a 15, but if I'm wrong on that initiative, that could be my fault. Oh no! I thought you were back at the top of the round. Oh no! No no no! no. Gristle, Gristle's, Gristle's <laughs> after. No, I'm, I'm still in the middle of the round. So we're I'm good. just, I'm just getting hit by star knives. Uh, <clears throat> uh, wait. So don't move or do move. Um, move. <laughs> I heard the rocks. Uh, mm, getting mixed signals here. Uh, okie dokie. Uh, I just, I go to pillar number two. Okay. And I want to. See if I can touch that one. I'm just gonna touch them all. That's my plan. You're gonna go touch them. Oh yeah, you, you push up and and you touch the pillar. Um, despite the fact that now you can see the star knives moving, like they don't have, they don't seem to have a physical presence until they actually fire because it, it just feels like carvings on the on this pillar. And does this one seem different than the first one at all? No, it it just seems like a like a pillar covered in star knife and now glowing. It's glowing now. Um, can I just cover it in star knife patterns? Do I? I don't know if I can do that. Can I go stand behind it so I'm not in the, towards the going part? Because well, are all the carvings facing in? No. Um, these are these are round pillars. So oh, I see. They're all the way around. around. To the other side, okay. they would be. Uh, yeah. Uh, there, there's carvings all around. I duck. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I Try duck. to make as small a profile as you can. Uh, reuse that defend action that may or may not exist, and give yourself <laughs> plus one to AC. Cool. <laughs> Okay, I touched this one. Don't, I don't think anything happened. I, the, the, <laughs> I guess it's it only two actions. Um, yeah, you still have a third one. Uh, I just can I just use my third to uh, perceive per perception yeah. in the room. Sure, absolutely. Uh, yeah. Anything that's no, changing a, that, that's a, that could be very valuable sometimes. Yeah. Uh, go ahead and make a perception check. Well, it's not very good. <laughs> it's an eleven. <laughs> An eleven. Okay. Yeah, you are. You're. You're kind of freaking out, and and you're kind of getting all these. You're just kind of hoping. You really, really hoped that just touching one would work this time, like it did last time. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, and so it's a little confusing that it's not working, uh, and you don't really notice anything else. Uh, but still, okay, a good I don't. Use. I don't think I solved this puzzle, but um, <laughs> you know, I'll keep. I'll keep going till I hit all six. So just let me know if that's the right, you know, thing. That's my plan right now. <laughs> Uh, now, Waverly, we have come to your your part in this initiative order, and it is your turn. Ava, you Waverly. <laughs> I'm going to look over to Gristle and say, perhaps you should try smashing them. Uh, and I'm just going to raise my shield and and keep the light on, yeah. on them so that they can take care of it, and that yeah. is going to be my action. All right. Raise the shield that could be the difference between taking mm -hmm. a star knife to the face and not. We will find out as we move into the next round. Fee, <laughs> you feel like you might have a way to affect this, whatever mechanical forces are at work here. You also have heard Waverly suggest smashing the pillars, which theoretically could work, um, or even trying to batter your way through the doors. Uh, but either way, what do you want to do? Uh, I'm going to try to break this mechanism, essentially, if yeah. I can. Absolutely. Break, right. pick the lock, anything of that sort. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, out come the thieves' tools. You start, like, poking around. There are, like, some loose tiles that you peel aside, and you see there is this weird... It doesn't make... There's, there's a lot of this magic going on here. It mm -hmm. may, may, makes you feel a little uneasy, but you realize that you could still theoretically jam this up if you if you could get it. Um, I would say, in this specific instance, this is not something in the rules. It's not in the rules for this trap, but I like it because I think it would be cool because it is a magical and mechanical trap, I would say, that uh, 
I will allow anybody who's trained in Arcana to make rolls to assist you. Yes, I was going to ask. With their actions, if they want. Yes, please. Mm. Mm. Okay, uh, Jim Jam, I'm going to ask you a question first. Okay. Do you want the clever choice, or do you want the kind of fun, stupid choice? <laughs> I'm going to go for kind of fun, stupid choice every yeah, time. Cool. I mean, All right, I have two actions. Option. <laughs> so I'm going <laughs> to I'm gonna quick draw my lightning short sword. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> yeah. And I want to jam it in and then activate a charge. <laughs> Hell yeah. All right. Uh, make an attack roll. Much, oh. like, uh, much like a creature, if you're attacking an object, there is a roll involved. Uh, basically, you would be able to hit it, but do you hit it with enough force to like penetrate through and actually damage it? That's what we're looking for. That is a uh, 25. Ooh. 25. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you get in there. Um, roll damage. That is 10 points of lightning damage. 10 points of damage. Your sword, I mean, this this contraption, it's metal and stone, and like you jam it in there, and it doesn't really, like, you, you, it's like you, you bury just the, just the tip, it finds purchase. But that's not really the, the big show that you're going for anyway. Uh, objects have uh, all have a hardness so um your attack wasn't enough your, your damage isn't enough to get through this object's hardness but if you were to say unleash a blast of electricity uh, that energy would would get through i'm gonna i'm gonna do it <laughs> yeah yay i'm gonna do it <laughs> gonna Just do it all right send it out it kind of kind of Think like He-Man, like by the power yeah. of Grayskull, but instead of up, like it's going it. down. <laughs> I like it. I'm all for it. Yeah. Uh, so with your third action, you activate the spark blade and a blast of electricity, much like you did with the Basilisk, where you just like buried the blade in and then uh, these arcs of electricity go down into this contraption. Go ahead and roll your electricity damage. And that was 2d4 plus 2? That's correct. Yep. Uh, seven seven points of electricity damage uh the 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 machine that you're looking at begins to smoke um it's not destroyed but you can i mean you just blasted it with a bolt of lightning essentially so um you've certainly made headway uh, you might be able to it, you might be able to brute force your way through this yet mm. but if i'm not mistaken that was uh action number three look at Inkit and say the rocks <laughs> Ingot. Yes. It's your turn. Now, so, uh, I, I had mentioned that you can aid um, your friend, Fee. Uh, what you could do, mechanically how that would work, is if you want to essentially make a roll that helps Fee on any check he's going to make to disable this trap, mm -hmm. what you would actually do is ready an action now, which will take two of your actions. You would ready uh, when Fee does his thing. I'm going to aid him. To do Got this. it. Uh, um, I appreciate way. that, but I'm going to do yeah. it different because we went a different direction. Uh, <laughs> uh, Ingot is actually, he's focused on the barrier so that the protective ward is still oh, there yeah. around them. Uh, so that's one action to keep that up. And yep. then uh, as you say the, to Ingot, the rocks, he's holding those two rocks that he was before, but now they're levitating off of his hand and you can see that there's electricity crackling between them. And he grabs the hilt of the sword and casts Shocking Grasp. Oh, dang. I like this. <laughs> I like it. I'm a big fan. I'm a big yeah. fan. Visually, this is a super cool moment. All right. Go ahead and uh, uh, roll the electricity damage. I yeah, 2d12 electricity. Yeah. Just blast this thing. <laughs> 513. 13 points of electricity damage courses through the blade down into this contraption in the floor and it's smoking and sputtering pieces of it are starting to like like you can see like the the, the sort of gears that are turning are starting to come loose uh this thing is still active but you have you guys are damaging it pretty severely also um the uh, if it's made of metal at all i get a bonus but uh, it's taking persistent electricity damage at three points Three points of persistent damage that'll tick at the end of its turn. That's great to know. Because it is its turn. <laughs> Following its routine, it is going to blast star knives out. The first star knife coming in at... 
bristle. <laughs> that I like was when the you're, point. whenever uh, Jim's trying to pick someone, I think we all kind of look down, like, don't look at me, don't yeah, pick no. me. <laughs> it's like when a teacher is trying to call yeah. on somebody. Oh, it's like, <laughs> I don't know the answer. <laughs> However, mm-hmm. as the dice have giveth me before, they now taketh away. Oh. Maybe perhaps all of this elect- this electrical surge causing like a almost like a short circuit, a star knife peels off of the uh, uh, the pillar and starts to whir around and spin, and then the whole thing gets blasted with lightning. And instead of flying at Gristle's face, it just falls to the ground and yes. almost like shattering glass just dissipates. As I roll a one yeah. for my first attack <laughs> and fail miserably. Luckily. I've got two more. The next one is going to come in at Ingot. Oh. Attack number two coming in. Oh my gosh. This is, statistically, this, is, this is statistically unbelievable because I rolled a second natural one in a row. Yes. <laughs> oh. Very, very sad. Okay. <laughs> very not cool. I, Incredibly I, not cool, Dice. In my previous wow. playthrough of Pathfinder, we had a house rule that if you had three ones or three twenties in a row, it was a big thing. So three ones means a cataclysmic event happens. Yeah, if is you that want what it means? To. Yeah. Is that what it means? <laughs> <I> love <laughs> it. Cataclysmic event is that I'm failing miserably. Another star knife just goes and it, and it tries to fire at you, but instead it just like whips around the room, almost like a, a loose uh, firework and just explodes Ooh. against the ceiling in a shower of sparks and nothingness. My third and final attack, which better not be another one, or I'm going to be really mad, uh, is going to fire at the. Better not be. Uh, it's not a one, but it's a five. So one, one, five. Uh, yeah. This third star knife just comes in, uh, bounces off the barrier mm-hmm. surrounding you and Ingot, uh, and and just dissipates in the in midair. Worthless. <laughs> Garbage trap. I hate this. Thing. Uh, it is now. Uh, uh, whose turn is it? Gristle, I believe. You are next to go. Um, can I enter that barrier that you've made, mm-hmm. King it, or is in it just fact, is it one it's, way? It's expanding, and you would be included in it. Mm, weird. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> hey, are we? So no, I'm not hitting. You don't want me to poke all the pillars, or what, what's? Are you? Do you want me to help you with that, or? You can just see the two of them are kind of like enwrapped in this like electric field concentrating. <laughs> Looks, I feel like you have it handled. I'm gonna do my thing. <laughs> I, I think Russell would not have the, like the, the 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 state of mind to know that they're they're trying to dismantle a complicated device. Yeah. So, I'm gonna go to the third one, but this time, I'm gonna try to smash it. <laughs> sure. Uh, again, you're making an attack roll. I mean, it, it's uh, pretty much guaranteed to hit. We're not worried about that. We're worried about can you actually damage it. So instead of having you actually roll an attack roll, just roll damage. Okay. Uh, and if it if it is over the hardness, then you will actually damage the pillar. If it's under the hardness, then it'll just ding right off of it. Okay. I think I would use my uh, I would use the great sword for this. I feel sure in my heart. Sure. Uh, so that is not great. That's that is a, is a, a six total. Six total damage. That's you come in, uh, you whip the sword around your head, slam it into the pillar, and it's just like it's like a cartoon where the whole thing just vibrates <laughs> up your arm, and you're like, uh, uh, it almost shocks the blade out of your arm. Oh. Uh, but 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 you're okay. Uh, it's just you realize that it, it wasn't that wasn't a hard enough strike. Sorry, sorry, uh, Beverly. I think, I think smashing pillars is not uh, on the table today for me. So uh, think of a new plan. Um, <laughs> so that would have been like all three actions, right? Moving there, drawing, yeah, moving, hitting. drawing, okay. and attacking. So that's your third action from this I'm round. I'm really used to this time around. Okay, here we go. <laughs> Two way. <laughs> Am I able to aid B? Uh, are you trained in Arcana? I. Am. And yes, uh, if you want to go up there and do that, yeah. How so you close move over there. Gotta get. <laughs> you got to get up next. I mean, if you're trying to, you have because he, he's dealing with a very complex procedure, so you have to be right there to point out, like, hey, you know, scratch out this rune here, or you know, get that, like, deactivate that. Uh, so you need to be right up in that business. Okay, I do it. Okay. <laughs> uh, I realized that you know, I had this whole thing where I was gonna 
ready in action, blah, 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 whatever. Uh, if you just want to make an arcana check now. So you move up to him, make an arcana check. If it hits the, the aid threshold, then you'll give him a bonus when he does his thing. Uh, that's going to be a 25. Oh. oh, yeah, that does it. Uh, DC 20 to help somebody. Uh, so a 25 does it. And Thee, if you make an attempt to disable this device as Waverly is like pointing out like, oh, wait, these runes are powering this pillar. Get it. Uh, you will get a bonus of plus one to a check. Oh, yeah. Uh, and uh, is there anything uh, you have another action you want to take, Waverly? Raise my shield. Raise mm-hmm. the shield up. <laughs> Thee. Waverly comes up, shield raised, points out a couple of the runes, like, hey, if you if you could scratch those out or or, or, or jam this piece, uh, you might be able to sever the magical connection to some of these pillars. Giving you a little boost, but you've also just been blasting it, which has seemed also to be working. So it's up to you how what tactic you want to go with this round. Uh I'm gonna sh- I'm going to try to follow Waverly's advice. Okay, maybe, sure. Maybe blasting it has made it a little bit easier to get to where I might need to be anyways. The guts. Yeah. You have noticed that the the last couple of star knives have just been like flying around at random almost yep. as this thing can't can't get a bead on you anymore. Exactly. All right. So let's try and disable that thing. Oh, Make a I thievery a, check. A plus one? Plus one for Waverly. That's right. Okay. So that's a 24. Ooh. 24. Perhaps it's because you've damaged it so severely. Perhaps it's just because Waverly pointed out just the right rune to like scratch at and, and dig off of one of the stone gears. Uh, perhaps it's luck or a combination of all of them. But as you sit there and, and, and get the picks in there and uh, you have this chisel and you just like slam it down into one of these uh, pieces of stone scratching out this rune, uh, there is a pop and an explosion of light just underneath you. And all of the pillars, all of the star knives on the pillars that were spinning rapidly, all begin to slow and slow and come to a stop. And then one by one, they wink out, no longer glowing. And you have disabled this complex trap. Ah! <laughs> So which thing to... did it? Was it the, the lightning thing or was it me touching the third pillar? Because I kind of, you know, thought that was going to work. <laughs> I think it was both. I think Probably. I think doing all of this inside, it triggered that third pillar to be the thing to turn it off. Oh, yeah. That's what I thought. I think so. I'm pretty sure it was what Ingot and Thee were doing. <laughs> uh, still right. with the hands on the hilt of the sword, Ingot looks over and says, it was probably Gristle. <laughs> and then... <laughs> takes his hand off. We have strange experiences. We almost, we we had very little trouble with a terrifying magical trap, but got beat the hell out of by plants. <laughs> if, mm, yeah. Well, that's the life of an adventurer. We never know what's around each door or dark cellar that definitely looked like it was cursed. Speaking of doors, Ingot's gonna go check. Are they still shut? Uh, they're shut. But um, as you're moving across the room, you hear this like ka-chum, ka-chum, from both sides of the room. And when you test the, the door on the far end of the room, and it, does, it, does, it does, is able to open. Ah, there might be more to this. I'm gonna <laughs> oh. with my shield because I have, I have all the light on my shield mm-hmm. still. Um, yeah. Ingot, um, well, I don't want to advise you as to what you should do, Perhaps if we had two light sources, that would make the rooms even brighter. Mm. Yes, yes. And he'll pull out his crystal to cast light as well. A glowing crystal and a glowing shield. Plenty of light down in the darkness. And Karsten Starhands there. What do you guys do? Uh, as we're moving along, uh, Fee, were you injured with by any of them? No, I don't no? think so. Oh, okay. No, Gristle. yeah, I, I was very, but very lightly. Uh, very lightly. So I'm, I'm still good. But Gristle has visible injuries now again too. No, I'm fine. I'm, oh, okay. Nothing hit me. <laughs> the ground. Yeah. I'm perfectly fine, and I solved the puzzle. We'll just keep going. I'm doing great. <laughs> yes. Should perhaps Thee go first in case we run into any more of these traps? Mm. If like Thee is the comfortable way. with that. Oh, absolutely. I, I. <laughs> I want to go and find who we stab or don't stab. 
because these magic attacks are really starting to confuse me. I mm -hmm. thought it was a joke and now it seems very real and there is magic under those rocks. Nothing here makes sense. Oh, that's what you meant by magical rocks. I understand now. It's the secret. Well, I don't think it was a secret as it was shooting things at us. Mm -hmm. So of course it was under some form of magical spell. Are those muddy footprints still here? Good call. Make a survival check. Uh, 16. Uh, you do see um, some track dirt. Looks like it goes deeper into this barrel. These footprints are still here, which means the person got through that just fine. And that makes me angry. <clears throat> Or perhaps they're the one who set the trap to begin with. Mm. Or they just pressed the pillar number three and they knew, you know, they had advanced knowledge of this uh, tomb. They must have known something to come down here, right? Mm. So. Do we think that it's more likely that, that the person that was in that tomb is walking around now? He's... Oh, no. That's... I, I haven't received any sort of indications that it could be that. Perhaps it could be grave robbers. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Great heroes such as this might have valuable treasures buried with them. That is true. And uh, if I'm remembering correctly from my lore um, and studies of the undead and tombs, I do recall that sometimes traps are placed to, to ward off people from disturbing tombs of famous or, in this case, infamous people. Mm -hmm. So it's either a grave rubber or a scary magic person who loves dead people. Or both. Oh. You know, either way, it's going to be a great story. And I feel like I'm confident that this team can take care of it. We've faced some crazy stuff we got Let's see, ghost, baby dragon, mm -hmm. uh, kobolds, um, basilisk. Basilisk, that was a good one. <laughs> uh, gra Don't grass. Don't forget the spider. Oh, spiders, yeah. What's one more? Fire yeah, cool rat. Spiders. Fire rat was, Ooh, mm, yes. That was a bad one. Quite mm. dreadful. We so, had, hasn't it only been like a month? Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> We've been busy. <laughs> <laughs> God, what are our lives? You know, without you three uh, analyzing this uh, for me, I wouldn't have known there was a pattern emerging of scary things happening to this town. Uh, so thank you for putting that out to mm. me. And I think this is part of the problem, maybe. Mm. Let's go quietly and investigate right. the rest. I'm gonna start, I'm gonna move back. ahead of the party and keep an eye out for traps. Keeping an eye out for traps. Uh, yeah, that sounds good to me. What is your perception bonus? It is a six. Six, all right. So you're moving a little bit ahead, keeping an eye out for traps. Uh, is anybody else doing anything as you're moving along? I think Ingot's gonna use stealth. Stealthing, okay. Yeah. Go ahead and make a stealth check for me then while you're moving. I also will stealth, because I okay. think I've learned that we should be quiet. <laughs> <laughs> Forget 17. You, have, you cast light as well. That's right. <laughs> yeah, it's a 10. So. <laughs> okay. All right. <laughs> Crystal's having a lot of hard, hard time not having her armor clank, but you know. <laughs> uh, Waverly, anything from you? I will not be stealthing as I have a huge bright shield in front of me, <laughs> but I will be on the, on the hunt. I want to look for symbols. Okay. Mm. Looking for symbols. Make a religion check for me. Mm -hmm. Calling knowledge as you move along. Okay, that's gonna be 24. Nice. Um, you don't see anything as you're moving along that strikes you, uh, anything that reminds you of, of that feeling that you've got up on the, that smudged symbol in chalk on the, on the slab. You do see some carvings. Uh, most of them seem to have to, no, no real symbolic purpose. There, you know, some some writings about Karsten Starhand, and, uh, some depictions of deeds from her life. 
people she's killed and places she conquered. She was a very violent person, much like he, <laughs> he mentioned. She was, you know, she, she was uh, uh, not really somebody that she would have wanted to make friends with. Hope but she don't notice zombie. anything that... Because uh, I think he has a crush on her. Um... Fee, as you're moving along, you don't see anything that appears to be a trap or any other kind of danger. Uh, either somebody moved ahead and triggered things ahead of you, or whoever built this tomb assumed that the first room would be enough to keep anybody out. Ingot, you're doing your best to remain quiet, and Gristle, you're kind of like, your armor like squeaks with every step, and you're like, sorry. <laughs> Sorry, sorry. <laughs> I feel like with, with Ingot holding the light too, it's like the two of them doing an Abbott and Costello routine of trying to be quiet. <laughs> it's making it extra bright because the light is reflecting yeah. off my shiny armor because yeah, I'm yeah. standing way too close. There's a glint every, every five steps. Um, Fee, you're the first to see because you're a little bit ahead that there is another chamber that you are quickly approaching. And it does look like there is sort of a low flickering torchlight ahead of you as well. Approaching some chamber and there's a little bit of light in there. I'll uh, slow down to wait for the rest of the group. Okay. Catch up pretty quickly. Yeah. There is a light ahead of us in the chamber. What do you think we should do? And, and I, I, I don't know. I, mm. There's magic rods. Maybe a attractive dead woman. I'm not sure. <laughs> well, the I just have to say before we go move on, I'm really proud of you for stopping and making a plan with all of us because this time we won't have a misunderstanding like like the time before. So I, I appreciate your actions. This is me telling you that I appreciate it. I learned that from uh, Beverly. <laughs> Kirsten, that was very kind. And it's not even that I'm surprised. It's just that I think I see you as a leader. I'm surprised that didn't happen sooner. But uh, but maybe I didn't. Maybe I didn't deserve it. Eh, I'm dense. Okay. Um. All right. Bright light. Possible scary person. Sneaking, then attacking, or sneaking and interrogating. We should probably decide now, huh? Well, if it is indeed a human or a living being, we should interrogate, but if it proves to be hostile off the bat, then I think attacking is quite permissible. If okay. it's undead, do you still want to talk to it, Waverly? Well, that depends, because Finley was quite a interesting character to speak with, and we were able to help him cross over, but, um, well, I think it just depends what sort of undead being it could be. That actually makes sense to me. But if it proves to be hostile, I think you know my opinions on that. Pacify. Fine. Uh, okay, so sneak then attack, or we just run in there screaming attack, because I like the second one, but I feel like <laughs> getting the feeling that's... You all yeah. don't like that one. I'm actually okay with the second one. I hate this place. Oh, okay, two for that. And how, no. you, how will you do? No. No, okay. If we are sneaking and there is already a light source over there, perhaps we should snuff out our lights. <gasps> and Ingot will do that then. Okay. Snuffing out the light. Well, why don't I just follow behind as you sneak? Um... I don't quite like to be in the dark. Actually, it might be better if you go ahead. If the light is in front of us, then there will be shadow behind, and you are the most likely to speak to them. Oh, yes. Yes, you're quite right. Okay, I shall go first, then. We have your back. Yes. Okay. Go, negotiator. You can do this. I walk in the room. <laughs> and I like to think Hello. the three of us. Okay, you guys send your healer in to go yeah. cry. <laughs> we got Pila back up and she accepted. Right. We, the power of friendship will keep you safe, Waverly. Yeah. <laughs> we are power one messed friendship. up party. Yes. I love it. 
I like to think that Waverly's getting ready and the three of us, like, anime style, Wah! into the dark. <laughs> I'm just standing behind a pillar, like. <laughs> so I'll raise my shield guys... as I enter. Right, shield up, defending as you enter. Uh, I'm going to say if you guys want to be totally out of the light, uh, you're going to need to be 40 feet behind Waverly as she moves forward, because there's, you know, it, it, torch, the light sheds 20 feet of uh, the bright light, and then there's a little bit of light after that. So if you want to be in darkness, hmm. 40 feet. If you want to be at the edge of the light where you're not as sneaky, you could get 20, you could get a little bit closer. That's up to you. You guys tell me whether you're going to get to stay a little bit closer, but less sneaky, or you want to be fully dark in the back. Ingot needs to be closer because he wants to be within spell range. Okay. Gotcha. I would stay closer because that's my intern you're talking about. <laughs> closer Aww. to the intern and then fee. I'm in the shadows now. Nah. In the <laughs> shadows, yes. <laughs> Way in the back. All right, great. So Waverly, you enter a chamber. As shadows. quietly as one can. As quietly as one can. Shield raised. Brightly glowing shield raised. And there's <laughs> shadows flickering all around you. Very oddly, almost like they're, like the shadows themselves seem to move independent of the light. It's a very weird, disconcerting south end of the room, there's a large stone sarcophagus decorated with the carvings of a star and the open palm of an outstretched hand. The sarcophagus looks cracked, and an inky goo dribbles out of it. There are two upright coffins that flank this sarcophagus. Both of them are ajar. In the corner of the room, near where all of this is, you see a pale stiff corpse of a recently deceased half orc and as you step into the room some of this goo at the base of the sarcophagus begins to bubble up no. into a vaguely humanoid shape and you are now face to face with what appears to be a walking shadow in the form of an armored warrior the upright coffins both burst open. Oh no! And two shambling zombies stumble oh, no. out from inside. And the shadow says, Come, child, join me. And it is time to roll initiative. Oh, I'm so scared. Like, go to his house or what? Oh. <laughs> I mean, does he have snacks? Like the parents? Does he have candy and snacks? Oh, shoot. Candy and snacks are not in the cards. With this 15 guy. here. Uh, you said 15? Yes. Gristle? Great. You were at 15 last time. I can leave you right where you were. Uh, Waverly? 26. Okay. Nice. Ooh. Escape. Nice. Uh, Ingot? 12. Fee? 18. Any up. Mm -hmm. Right. We're here for well, you, Waverly. <laughs> the first thing that happens with a higher than 26 initiative Whoa. is this shadowy figure. No. <laughs> Almost like it just slides forward. You like you're looking at it across the room, and then all of a sudden it's just boom in front of you, like a <gasps> horror movie. And its outstretched hand is reaching for you. And it tries, it just like, you have your shield up, but it doesn't even seem to like, like it phases through your shield. And it looks like it's trying to reach into your chest. <gasps> as oh, no. the shadowy hand makes an attack. Uh, <laughs> no thanks. <laughs> oh, Waverly, that's a 34 to hit. <laughs> no! The hell did you say? <laughs> what the hell is this plus? This perception. Don't worry about that. I got a good, I, it was a good roll. It, this was not a middling roll. This was a solid roll. So don't, it, it, he it's, like reaches no through the light. Oh yeah. Uh. That wasn't a nat 20 for a 34 is what I'm It hearing. was not a nat 20, but That's it was my darn problem. close. <laughs> uh, I don't think 34, uh, it is, this is against your full armor class. So I don't believe though that that is a crit, right? Or is it a crit? You tell me. Uh, y yeah. I oh, think okay. so. Wait, uh... Wait, it's 10 above, sorry, 10 above your armor class. Yeah. 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 Okay, no. Although, I, I'm at a 17, so 
17, so 27 is your crit threshold. Mm -hmm. uh, 34 is going to bypass that. Oh, no. As it reaches Goodbye, into your chest, you feel as if your very life force is just being drained as this thing, like, grasps its shadowy hand around your heart. Oh. You take 20 points <gasps> of negative energy damage. Uh-oh. Wait, oh. what's your HP? <laughs> I'm okay. <laughs> I'm not and dead. And then it uses its third action no! <laughs> to try again. <gasps> I can't roll into the room and say, take me instead. <laughs> Waverly, that's a 25 to hit. You jerk, no! he's taking me out. You guys are going to be on your own. No, no, no. Oh, no. This one, not a critical, but a solid hit as once again, it just like with its other hand swipes across your face and it moves so languid and slowly. And when it hits you, you don't feel like a physical force, but you feel just this cold energy as, and, and those of you who can see her, you actually see like streaks of her hair are growing white uh, as this thing brushes its hand through her face. You take another nine points. <laughs> Of negative energy damage. And Waverly that was unconscious. Its third action. No. Oh. Unconscious, dying one. Oh no. And this shadow is just standing over her body, and it looks like it's still going to reach for her, almost like it wants to like pull something out of her. You don't know what, but you are terrified to find out. It is. Uh, Waverly's turn, but she is dying, so we'll move on to Thea. <laughs> you it's your suck. turn. <laughs> oh, I couldn't go first. Wow. You rolled so well, too. I thought yeah. you were going to go before it. Run away. Oh, gosh. What do we do? <laughs> we fight ingots. What else do we do? <laughs> or take the peeling potions from her belt and Use them on her is my other idea. Uh, uh Fee, you are up. Okay, so she's 40 away? 40 feet, yeah. Okay, uh, so one action to move 30, another okay. action to move the rest of the way up to Waverly. Yep. And I bought one minor healing potion. Oh, good. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to, uh, use it on Waverly. Using it on Waverly, so you bend down and just like pour this healing potion down her throat. Uh, yeah. Go ahead and roll the healing on that. Uh, if it's is it the magical one or is it an elixir of life? Uh, it's just a, it's a healing potion minor. Okay, great. So that's just one d eight points of healing to Waverly. Six points of healing to Waverly. Six hit points. All right, Waverly, your eyes flutter open as this. This potion restores a little bit of what was taken from you by the shadow. You are wounded one. <laughs> Feeling horrible. Uh, Fee, as you're like looking down at Waverly, you can see like her skin looks cracked and like pale. Again, streaks of her hair have gone gray and brittle. Uh, she looks like her, her very essence has been sapped away. It is a horrific look. This floaty in front of you not going to be a friend like Blue Finley was. And oh, go ahead. Oh, he's just he's just saying I hate this place. This is why. <laughs> this, is why this is why. This is why. This is why D does not steal from graves. Mm. Nope, uh, it's a good policy in a world where the undead are a real thing. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Gristle, you're up. You saw your intern get wrecked. What do you do? Um. So, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, Gristle freaks the fuck out. This is like the first time for that fuck. Uh, this is the first time I think Gristle has seen one of, uh, besides uh, herself, be in mortal terror. Um, I uh, can I get there in one movement? At twenty five. Yeah, speed. you were because you were you were only you were sort of staying at the edge of her light, so you mm -hmm. were only twenty feet behind. So one action will get you up to this thing, or Waverly, or Thee, whoever you wanted to go up to. Uh, I want to go up to Waverly. Can okay. I can I grab her and chuck her, or grab her and put her somewhere else? Yeah, if you want to grab her and just drag her body, that is fine. If you want to huck her behind you, you can basically reposition her right behind you. Um, 
if you want to move her any further, I'll require an athletics check. Uh, or you can take your third action to move you and her like half your speed back, and you'll both be away from this thing. Mm. I want to try to use my athletics because I'm pretty good at hey, athletics. You're just going to try to like <laughs> slide her like a bowling ball across the floor. Yes. Um, uh, great. So make an athletics check. Because I am the tank, not her. <laughs> mm. That's a net 20, my dude! Ooh, of all times! I love times. it. I love <laughs> it. What's your seven. total? A 27. 27, so I'll say, uh, we'll say you can move her uh, 15 feet back right. towards the end. So you so just I, like I, slide her across, yeah. Before I, I, I run over and I just grab by the face, and, you should not have been at the front of the party. I don't know what I was thinking. I am so, I am so sorry. This is gonna hurt a little bit. And then I shove her over. <laughs> <laughs> yep. You just shove her across the floor. She goes sliding back towards the entrance, hopefully to safety. And then there were two zombies in this room as well that begin shambling forward. Now they're slow. They're not nearly as scary as this horrible shadow creature. So as they stumble forward, they will have to take both of their actions to get to where you, Gristle, and Thee are right now. But then... They don't have enough to do anything else. They are permanently slowed, so they can only take two actions and they have to use both of them just to get up into the fray. Perhaps that'll buy you enough time to figure out what the heck you're gonna do. And it is Ingot's turn. Hmm. So Ingot's gonna move uh, up in front of Waverly. So he's been behind like sort of sneaking along. And as yeah. soon as Waverly sort of comes sliding along the ground, uh, Ingot will set up right in front of her and raise his magical shield. Uh, as All well. Right. Getting that magical shield up. Uh, plus one bonus to you and to Waverly at this point. Remember that, Waverly, if it becomes important at all for you. And on top of that, uh, Ingot has um, an arcane bond with the stone that he has on his neck. So mm -hmm. he's able to cast Protective Ward again, expending that uh, extra spell slot. So it allows him to cast the same spell again. Okay. Uh, and Sounds so, fantastic. Yeah. So that is a total of plus two for a shielding and AC. Nice, 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 nice. All right. That abjuration then, specialty come into play as you mm -hmm. do everything you can to defend your friends. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, that'll take us to the top of the next round. There is a very angry shadow. It wanted something from Waverly and has been denied. So we'll go for the next best thing. It'll take a step forward with its first action and with its second action, it will try to reach in and rip the life from Gristle. Oh no. Oh, against the old, oh, we went from good to bad. I'm at a total of 17. Nope. Not as good of a roll on that one. That is a miss. So knowing what to expect, you sort of duck back out of the way. This thing swipes through empty air, comes up with its other hand with a follow-up with its third action, making a second attack, hanging an armor class of 21. Oh, it hits. All right, so this time you're unable to duck that second strike. And you take, as its wispy hand flows through you and you feel like, like your lungs seize up and you like have a hard time breathing for a moment. <sighs> taking 10 points of negative energy damage. That was his third action. It's fine, just don't um, like let it touch you, I'm fine. <laughs> <laughs> Waverly, you're conscious, you're prone, uh, but you're no longer dying, you're just wounded one. So remember that if you go unconscious again, you'll go down, uh, you'll actually increase your dying condition by your wounded condition. So you'll automatically go to dying too if you get knocked down again. However, you're up and you're at least safe for the moment. There are two zombies, you fought those before, and the shadow creature, which you have not fought yet, but boy, are you starting to learn some horrible things about it. Yes. <laughs> Is standing in action? Okay, uh, how many feet did Gristle huck me? Like 10 feet? Uh, 15 feet. So you're basically like right, Damn. almost right at the entrance to this room now at this point. So how far away is the shadow creature from me? 15 feet, 20 right? feet, 20, 20 total feet. feet. Yeah, and what about the zombies? The zombies are, are uh, same distance because they just walked up to be with, with in that cluster, so. Okay, I'm gonna stay 
on the ground. Okay. And I'm going to use my three action heal. Yes. Nice. On everything within 30 <laughs> feet. Oh. Everything. <gasps> That's correct. That is going to affect the undead. Positive energy. Oh. Positive energy. It's going to heal all of you and hurt me. And I need to make, is it a fortitude save or a will save? Fortitude, basic fortitude. Fortitude save, all right. So the shadow will go first, getting an 18 total. Um, that is the AC. All right, so it'll take half damage. Okay. Uh, and then the zombie, zombie one uh, gets a 14 total. Zombie two, a 15 total. Not great. Sweet. All right, here it comes. And then everyone else will get this in healing who's Yay. injured, including Yay. myself, which would be nice. <laughs> um, just reading real quick. It's so interesting to me that the three action, you don't get the plus that the two action gives you, right? It's the trade-off of figured, area. Uh, yeah. Got yeah. It. AOE burst or targeted, yeah. Ooh, eight. Ooh. That's, that's, still, great. Uh, that's a good roll for that. All right, so uh, the shadow, some of it gets blasted away in this uh, uh, burst of positive energy. The zombies do significantly worse, like some of their body just melting away uh, as it seems to almost catch on fire. Mm. But they're all still standing. Still a great use. Great use mm -hmm. of that ability. Ingot looks back while holding up the shields and says, more of that, yes! <laughs> <laughs> Keep protecting me, and mm. I can! <laughs> mm. uh, and that was the three-action version of that spell. Mm. So we move from Waverly to Thee. Um, how far are the zombies from each other? Uh, there's probably a total of ten feet between them. Okay, so there's, I couldn't really position myself to be within five feet of both of them. No, because of the way the shadow is. Like, it's basically like zombie, shadow, zombie. Cool, okay. Um, I'm, I'm gonna go for the zombie on the left and just run up and then take a swing. Yeah, uh, stab away. All right. The real magic, stab. Yes. <laughs> uh, you know what, Fee is literally gonna say, I cast stab. <laughs> <laughs> and it's even if it's just under his breath. Yeah. Uh, so that's going to be a 26 to hit. Oh, yeah. That'll not only be a hit, a critical hit. And yes. uh, I, I want to, I'll backtrack just a little bit and say that uh, I forgot about the zombies themselves are weak to positive energy. So they will take an additional five points of damage uh, nice, from nice. that spell. So not only do they fail their save, but they took additional damage. Now Thee is just stabbing one of them in the face. Yep. Feels good. It works. Uh, <laughs> 13. 13 points of damage. 13 points of damage. This zombie, which was mostly like melted flesh and powdered bone, thanks to um, thanks to Waverly's spell, you just crumble its face with the point of your sword and it goes down in a heap. Zombie one is dead. Yeah. Sword magic meets rock magic. <laughs> <laughs> Um, then I'm gonna spend my third action to move back at least. So then, if at least try to split them up, they're yeah. gonna move somewhere. Yeah, that tactical movement we were talking about earlier. Mm -hmm. uh, Learn from you. you. Which direction mm -hmm. do you want to go? Do you want to go deeper into the room, back towards the entrance, to the sides? Uh, back towards the entrance, because then sure. if I go yeah. down, at least we're yeah. together. <laughs> gives you a, gives you a place to retreat to. Makes a lot of sense. You back away, uh, hoping that uh, you'll have to split them up, if nothing else. After that, after Thee's excellent turn, it is Grissom's. Um, I'm gonna go straight for the biggest, the big bad, the scary big ghost. Bad. That's yeah. Grizzle. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's how you do it. Uh, what are you attacking and, with? Okay, uh, so it's, I don't need to move, right? It's right next to me still? Nope, yeah, yeah, that thing came right up to you and-, and All right, just, it, it already tried to kill there. me once. Yeah. <laughs> Twice, actually. Um, okay, I'm going to, uh, start with power. Oh, I gotta 
use an action to draw my sword. God damn it. <laughs> which, <laughs> then which I'm going to... Uh, I'm going to use... Um, has, has it been 10 minutes for the fire sword? Can I activate that again? Uh, you activated... Yeah, because you activated against the, the plants. So, mm -hmm. yeah, for sure. Yeah, okay, cool. In 10 minutes. I take that one out. So the long sword's out. Uh, right. And then with my other two actions, I will use power attack. All right. So, uh, boop, 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 boop. That is a uh, 15 to hit. 15 is a miss. Oh my okay. God, I'm doing nothing. <laughs> this lithe shadow just like dips all of a sudden. You thought you knew where it was, but it was an actual shadow that you swung at. And this thing, like then you see its flickering eyes just a little bit to the left. Uh, I'm just real mad, so that's why I'm wi I'm wildly <laughs> swinging. Uh -huh. How dare you yeah. try to take my intern? She's not dismissed yet. <laughs> <laughs> intern doesn't die until I say. <laughs> oh. <laughs> uh, there is one zombie, and it is that zombie's turn. Uh, mindless, it saw movement, and it is going to go for it. So it is going to just shuffle forward trying to get to Thee. Uh, I will say this would trigger an attack of opportunity if somebody had that reaction. Oh. Hit me, also. Wait, is it close to me? Yeah, it had yeah. come up. Uh, it, it sort of like ignores you and is stumbling stupidly towards Thee, not seem to even process that you're there. Uh, <laughs> and as it passes by, that would trigger a reaction from you if you would like to take it. Yes. And when I'm doing a reaction, I don't have to roll to hit, or I do have to roll to hit still? No, you do have to roll still, okay. but you get that free attack. Understood. Um, okay, so that is a uh, 16. 16 does it. Okay. These zombies are easy to hit. Yikes. And then that's a D8 plus 3 for that guy. Um, that is an 8, uh, 9, 10, 11, plus the one fire damage, so that's nice. 12. 12 points of damage, and as you slash it, uh, it's flesh parts, especially easy. Zombies, weak against slashing damage. Oh. And you deal mm. an additional five points because of that. And this thing oh, was damn. already on, on undeath's door. So it just <laughs> falls in two halves as you slice through it as it tries to just shuffle past you. Um, an easy kill. You've dealt with the minions. That shadow's still there. Uh, that was still on my turn, uh, so zombie's dead. Ingot. Uh, Ingot is going to take one action to continue the protective ward, and then okay. take a second action to help Waverly up. So he's going to okay. extend his arm down sure. and pull Waverly up. I will definitely allow that, yeah. Sort of give a nod at her and turn around to face forward and slowly start moving forward for the okay. third uh, I will say that at this point, because Thee had moved back closer to you, so your bubble will cover you, Waverly, and Thee this round. Yes. Uh, by next round, it should expand to cover Gristle, but she's still just at the edge of the range. Um, but still, Fair. you're doing you're doing a good job protecting your friends. I'm trying. Yeah. 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 Uh, right. We're at the top of the next round. Yes. And the horrible, horrible shadow. Oh. Oh, oh, right. Not, yes. It is going to reach out with both hands and try to, like, just grab either side of Gristle's head. There's nothing in there. Hey, now. <laughs> oh, no. That is a 26 to hit. No. <laughs> well, AC 19, so it's not a critical hit. Uh, good, good, good to know. So not a critical hit, but it does just grab either side of your head, and its hands again just passes through your flesh. But you feel this like like a sudden migraine, uh, intense burning behind your eyes. You're gonna take uh, another twelve points. Uh, sorry, no wait, uh, that's eleven points of negative energy damage as this thing just. Um, and then. It sees more people, and it, it seems like almost to get confused for a moment. And it flood, it just moves through, you, like it like sinks into the floor, moves under your feet, Crystal, and almost as if it's becoming an extension of your shadow. It it flows through um, Ingot's barrier and like 
reforms itself. And Inga, you can still see where it's like now, like, like it's almost like this is Gristle's shadow that has risen up to attack you as it reaches out with its third action and makes its second attack against you. Oh. Uh, really cool and really terrifying. Yes, oh, yeah. both of <laughs> those. Is bad. Uh, <laughs> that is going to hit an armor class 19. That'll do it, but it's not a critical. All right, not a crit, but still a hit. Yeah. Uh, not great damage, thankfully, okay. against the wizard. Uh, we're looking at eight points of negative energy as it just uh, reaches out, grasps at you. Uh, all three of my actions have been taken up. Waverly, yep. you saw that positive energy hit, uh, dealt a vicious blow. Uh, this yep. creature seems to be a little tougher than the zombies were, though. Yep. Well, thanks to um, Ingot, I'm already standing, so yep. I'm gonna use a two action to cast heal upon it. All right, reaching out, asking for Saren Ray's grace to banish this creature from the world. I'll make a fortitude save. Please fail it. <laughs> uh, maybe that was a four on the die. <laughs> Twelve total. <gasps> Yay! Okay. <laughs> Here it comes. <laughs> Quick question, Jim Jam. Uh, so because I took the feet, um, healing hands, which allows me to swap my D8s that I use for heal with D10s, does that also mean on the two action where I get a D8 no. plus eight that I get a D10 plus 10, or is it still an eight? Uh, it's still an eight. Uh, yeah. healing hands has a very specific purpose for that. Um, I believe that there are other feats you can take that increase your damage against undead and stuff, but healing hands isn't going to do it for you. Ooh, that's eight. eight so points. eight plus eight, so 16. Nope, 16 points. Uh, again, there's almost like this fire that you shoot out from your hands uh, and it and it suffuses the shadow and banishes away some of the darkness as it starts to break apart. And this creature looks like it's trying to fight it off. It's thrashing about uh, and it does fight off the light, but you can see it's significantly diminished, seeming to move sluggish and weak now. Powerful hit, but powerful creature. It is not down and out by any means. I you use one my... action left. Yeah. Uh... How close is it to me? Because Ingot was real close, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah, so it's, it's maybe a total of 10 feet away from you at this point. Mm. Okay. I'll use my final action to raise my shield. Another question. Does my shield AC bonus stack with the one Ingot gave me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Ingot's, Ingot's thing is separate. So you are adding that, you're adding all those bonuses. Oh, heck yeah. Come at me, Jim Jim. Don't do it, I'm kidding. <laughs> no, you don't want that to happen, I assure God. you. My AC you is amazing right now. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I have a pretty, uh, pretty strong feeling that your hit points aren't that amazing right now, though. Fair. Uh, excellent turn, Waverly. You guys are in dire straits for sure, but you're heroes and you're making Ooh. headway. Fee, you're up. All right, I'm... So it's it's within melee of Gristle right now. Uh, with a, within melee of Ingen. Ingen, Ingen excuse me. Okay, Gristle so, now, so yeah. I'm gonna try to take a flanking uh, position <sighs> with it attacking sure. uh, Ingen. And I'm gonna take my first strike. Um, okay. And I haven't no, I haven't struck it this thing yet. So that is a twenty-three. Twenty-three is a hit. Um, As you stab it, though, does the cold iron affect it? Uh, Ooh, uh, is that what? You, so, what is the weapon that you're using? Is it just a cold iron short sword? It's the the lightning blade. <sighs> yes, the spark light. Okay, spark light, um, yes. You can you you feel like a weird kind of resistance. The blade doesn't. It does have some resistance, but because your blade is magical, you mm -hmm. are dealing some damage. Like you can feel it, like cutting through. Almost like and and the runes are like sparking and sputtering as it passes through this creature. And you go for a spot. You're like I, you know, right in the kidney. This is a humanoid creature. I can get it. But this creature doesn't have a physical form, and it is immune to precision damage. Mm -hmm. So you oh. do damage it, but you don't get any sneak attack on this. Interesting. Oh. Okay. That's a neat function. Yeah. All right. So then that is eight uh, points of damage. Eight points of damage. Now it does have resistance that I'll be subtracting. Um, 
because you have a magical weapon, you still deal some damage, yep. but you can feel like this is such a, it's it's so weird. It's, it's like you're literally trying to slice a piece of live of, of living darkness. And it's, 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 it's difficult to get a read on, um, but you do deal a little bit of damage. Uh, you can feel it cut through some kind of some form here. Okay. Right. Uh, just gonna take my second swing, just because. Yeah, right here. sure. 22. 22 is also a hit. All right. So then that would be 10 damage. Uh, Ooh! 10 points of damage. All right. That's a much oh, more solid hit. Resistance. Yeah. yeah, it does take the resistance, but it's still more damage than you did before. So That's uh, true. Yeah. It's like you kind of got it. You were you were expecting it to react like a physical being, and now that you know it doesn't do that, you sort of get a better handle on it. You don't have that weird feeling about it. You strike more confidently. Yeah. Blade cuts, but still. Everything about this creature is bad for me. <laughs> oh, it's super bad. Terrible. <laughs> That's Terrible name. creature. Shadows are awful. Uh, I will admit this encounter very scary. <laughs> very very scary. So no doubts there. But still, you guys are doing pretty well, all things considered. Gristle, you're up. Okay. Do I have to move to get closer to it now that it's moved away from me? Uh, yeah. So you basically you'll have to move. As, and now Fee has sort of interjected himself. So you'll you just what, it's still just one action. But yeah, you definitely have to move to reposition yourself. Oh. Uh, okay. I move, and I still right. have my fire longsword up, and I'm gonna fire try to freaking. I'm gonna try to power attack. I haven't been able to do this the whole time. <laughs> I rolled a hit. That's a nat 20, my dudes! Yeah! yeah. yeah. I believed it! Um, and that is a 29 uh, total. 29 total, that that's matters. gonna do it. Okay, so that is a d8 plus three. Ooh, that is a, a six plus fire damage is seven. Um, oh wait, how do I do it with the power attack? How do I do the... Uh, the damage again. I roll this twice, and I do my strength. You roll the once, so right? so the d8 for the weapon. You roll twice, but you don't okay. add your strength twice. And what did I just say? Because I picked up four. <laughs> so four guy okay, four. Uh, the so four plus four. That's eight. Uh, plus three is nine, ten, eleven. Uh, eleven points of damage, and then the fire damage. Do I add that once or twice? Yeah, once. Uh, so it's just one 11, one extra. Uh, so one okay. on top. Twelve. So it's just twelve. Again, you 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 get that same feeling that Thee got, where like you're sort of cutting through something, but also not, and like the runes on your blade are sparking, uh, and the magic is like slicing through this incorporeal form. Uh, it does resist some of the damage, but it takes some too. You can tell you're tearing away a part of its essence. Starting to think magic is stupid, but okay. No. <laughs> Magic's dumb. <laughs> Needs it. Uh, <clears throat> all right. We're at the top of the next round. This thing starting to get surrounded, outnumbered, but is it still too powerful to take on? We're gonna find out as it reaches out. Now remember, you're all in Ingot's bubble. Yay. So you're all getting that bonus from Ingot's uh, spell to your armor class. Keep that in mind as I turn my first attack towards the... Yeah. Attack number one coming in. Not great on the die. 22 to hit. Yep. <laughs> well. <laughs> yep. That hit. That hit. A beast. <laughs> it's a beast. I'm, I'm not going to lie. It's nasty. Uh, that is going to be uh, 10 points negative energy damage Ooh. as it All just right. reaches back. It doesn't even like turn around. A piece of its back like flows out and almost like stabs into your chest, draining you of your life force. Uh, as then a forward part of it reaches out towards Ingot once again. Try to take him out with the second attack. Uh, not great on the die again with a 14 total. Not good enough! Not good enough just gets turned by these magical wards that spark and glow all around uh, uh, Ingot's body, warding away the shadowy touch. Uh, almost simultaneously, a third appendage is like reaching out and snaking to wrap around Gristle's neck. It's third Ooh. attack coming in. Uh, wow, bad round for this guy, because I know that's a miss. Uh, my third attack bonus and a four on the die. We're looking at like something so weak. It's not happening. Yeah, it's a, that's a solid it away. miss. 
Magic's dumb. <laughs> <laughs> magic's stupid. Get out of here, Shadow. You magic kind person. Of an <laughs> Uh, yeah, it reaches out just and and these magical wards, uh, this this bubble of protective energy surrounding you from Ingot is starting to glow and crackle as it starts to turn aside the shadows, reaching grasping tendrils of darkness. After a horrible turn for me, we moved to Waverly. And now you die. Get out, Waverly. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to use two actions and target this creature with All right. you. Gotta make that save again. No, no you won't. Oh, gosh. <laughs> uh, 10 total, so no. <laughs> New. Okay, it's gonna be, come on, max damage. No, it's not max damage, but it's going to be 14 points of damage. Nice. Ooh. Okay. That's significant. Um, mm. So significant that as, as this blast of golden fire issues forth from your hand and and once again like merges with this creature uh and it and it sinks into its core and begins to brighten and where last time it faded away and it was crushed almost like it was crushed by the darkness surrounding it this time the light just goes brighter and brighter and brighter until it until the shadow itself seems to explode uh and this golden fire just lances all around it uh, consuming these this this physical shadow until it is completely gone and nothing remains you have destroyed it and won <sighs> it turns injured? around and hugs waverly <laughs> <laughs> oh thank you for your protection <laughs> uh, it thought that we lost you <laughs> I, I am also crying a little bit and hugging everyone <laughs> Well I done, look, team. I don't look at anybody. I look away. You're, I grab, I grab Fee by the by the scruff of his neck, and I pull him <laughs> in for the hug as well. Oh, we're all hugging. Oh, uh, oh, that was really stressful. I don't really. I hate this place. Oh, no. What is happening? It's Why does okay. this keep happening? To us? I told you not to go down the hole, and then you guys are all like, "Let's go down this stupid hole." Uh. And, and as as they're hugging Waverly, uh, ooh yes, I rolled max damage on that one. Uh, or max. Heal. Oh God, she kills you! Oh God! <laughs> oh, no, the No, you're gonna see this this bright yellowy white light just kind of slowly and Aww. and kind of gently and warmly, almost like wrap you as if it were arms of a hug and heal you for ten hit points. Nice. nice. Hey, nice. Good. The color returns to your cheeks as you all look around, feeling a lot better. Uh, probably just grateful to be alive after that horrifying encounter. As you're doing that, uh, Fee, I noticed this. Across the room, there is this corpse of a half orc in some leather armor. Looks like he's kitted out, much like you would expect an adventurer to be. If you're looking, you see that he has something clutched very tightly in its left hand. But you can't quite make out what it is from here. You're muted. You're muted. Am I? Can you hear me? Yeah. yeah. yeah now we can. To dim my curiosity, I'm going to go look. <laughs> All right. You go over there, and uh, it's clutched in sand. And you actually have to sort of like pry the fingers open because they're stiff yeah. from rigor mortis. And you see a black iron medallion, and it's a symbol. It's one that you've seen not too long ago. Shape that you're quite familiar with. As you saw it as you exited the baby dragon's lair beneath Atari. It is an unholy symbol of Lamashtu, <gasps> the mother of monsters. Her work in Otari is apparently not yet complete. But our episode is oh! end of it tonight. Cause we're out of here, everybody. <laughs> Why was that a nail biter at the end? I was not sure. <laughs> how that was gonna go oh Whew. my god thank goodness you guys healed me <laughs> you oh, like freaked yeah. out <laughs> as a team was, yeah, yeah. imagine if i had died you guys yes would have been... oh. well here's the this thing tomb forever. do you know what happens when you die to a shadow's attack 
Oh no, Someone? do you become um, a shadow? Oh, uh, then what? turn around and try to kill your friends. That oh my god, the that, that's no the bad. most unholy abomination They're for so a cleric. Bad. That would have been the so worst bad. thing to Waverly. Yeah. Oh. They're so bad. They're so nasty. Shadows oh. are terrible creatures. Uh, <laughs> I we made it, to it. At the beginning of this week because I was pre prepping for this encounter and I was like, shadows, so bad. Uh, just just so nasty. Uh, <laughs> no good at all. <laughs> but Ooh. you did defeat it and that is something to be proud of. This was a good one. I had a fun tonight. Uh, yeah. really Thank you. Pumped, it was really pumped good. to get back into this. Lamash 2 is still at work. We're going to have to find out all about that. We're going to have to wait till next week. Troubles in Atari only has three episodes left. What? No, does not. And <laughs> we have third level adventurers playing in those three episodes because you've all leveled up. Congratulations. Yeah. Yay. We you've earned now it. earned enough experience. <laughs> That's right. Tonight, defeating that shadow was all you needed to get that little bump. We're coming back with third level characters next week. Congratulations, guys. You earned that one for sure. Uh, we'll be back next week with some more Troubles in Otari. This is the follow-up adventure to the Pathfinder Beginner Box, which was recently released and is available on Paizo.com right now. You can also buy Troubles in Otari on, on uh, Paizo.com. So get the Pathfinder Beginner Box, get the follow-up adventure, have just as much crazy fun as we're having, and more, because I'm leaving some stuff, some surprises out. Like, there's things that I have that in the book that I haven't put in here, because I want you guys at home to have some some surprises for your for your adventures when you're playing at home, as you get that stuff. So check it out. It's all great stuff. Huge shout out to Paizo for hosting us. This has been a blast, as always. Cannot wait for next Wednesday. We will see you then, 6 o'clock Pacific. Good night, everyone. Bye-bye.